31, I'd like to call the Law and Government slash Liquor meeting, committee meeting to order. Um, may I ask Kathy, can you take the roll, please? Brian Sauter. Kelly Wagner. Here. Eric Hendricks. Here. Carolyn Campbell. Here. Matthew Kunkel. Here. Mike Shorten. Here. Pamela Altoff. Here. Good morning, everyone. Um, a couple of um, announcements for everyone this morning. Number one, I'd like to welcome um, board members Gloria Van Hoff, um, Teresa Meshes, and Carl Kaminsky. Uh, they are not on this committee, but as board members, we always invite board members to sit up at the table with us and feel free to participate in any of the comments and discussions that are going on at the table. Um, public comment this morning. Um, we are limited to three minutes per individual. You will get a two minute warning from our county administrator so you know when to bring your comments to a close. I would ask, there are many of you here this morning, um, we welcome public comment, but if you have really nothing more to say that adds on to the conversation, please you know, indicate that. Um, we want to give everybody an opportunity, but again, don't want, you know, constant repetition with the same facts and figures. Um, we also have people here taking pictures that is permitted, but we ask you not to be intrusive, which means don't come up and get into people's faces, etc. but obviously you're welcome to um, participate. Again, you can stand up and not take better. But, but we appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, moving on to today's agenda. Um, minute approval. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Um, motion by Mike Short, seconded by Kelly Wagner. Roll call, please, Kath. Uncle. Here. Campbell. Here. Yes. Carolyn Campbell. Here. Matthew Kunkel. Here. Carolyn Campbell. Yes. Sorry. Hendricks. Yes. Wagner. Yes. Shorten. Yes. Altoff. Yes. All right. Moving on to public comment. What I'm going to do is call your name and then the, pe the next person behind you and the person behind that so that you're ready so that we can move forward. I would ask you to state your name and provide your address if you can do that for me. So we have Joan Davis, James Zawicki, and Nancy Schwab in that order. Can I ask Joan? And can we please either have a seat here at this chair or stand at this location in the center. We're asking you to do that so that it can be heard on the computer um, meeting portal that we have and then when we actually record it and have it available to others to watch, you actually can be heard. So if you would come up this morning, Joan Davis. Good morning. I got Joan, you. can you come and stand here, please? Oh, Otherwise, we won't be able to record you or hear you on any of the future. Uh, you want me to be in here? Or just no, just right there in the chair, please. Thank you, Joan. And is there a particular focus that I should be looking, looking at? That's that yeah. yeah. that that's, that's okay. okay. Good morning. As a nurse, I'm very aware of the damage that guns, especially semi-automatics, can do to the human body. And as an American, just like you, I'm aware of the skyrocketing gun violence in this country, which, I to which is why I totally support House Bill 5471. As polls have shown, and I could dig out my uh, statistics about the polls, an overwhelming majority of law-abiding gun owners, and Americans in general, support sensible gun regulation, which is why my husband and I find the proposal, proposed resolution to make our county stand out and decide to exempt itself from House Bill 547 very damaging and sending a very poor message about this county. I believe that the regulation, the resolution, excuse me, would encourage irresponsible gun owners to visit or move to our county where they can enjoy less gun restrictions, resulting in the rest of us feeling less secure and safe. It allows individuals to decide what gun laws they will obey, whether they're in government or private citizens. 
it weakens our government's ability to operate without clear and consistent <coughs> rules. And finally, it sends the clear, dangerous message that McHenry County is soft on gun regulation. This is not a message, this is not a message I want our county board to send. I'm going to stop there. My husband and I feel very strongly that this is a very poor resolution and will end up damaging our county and individual citizens. Thank you very much, Ms. Davis. James? Here. Thank you, sir. Good morning. My name is James Zwicky, 2003 Church Street, Johnsburg, Illinois. <coughs> I've uh, been a, been a uh, resident of McHenry County for six years now, have lived in the area over 40, um, have seen changes in government, which is not healthy, and I just wanted to speak my mind today. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I do support the sheriff, and I support a resolution to go against 5471. We are having to reaffirm our Second Amendment rights once again. This is, a, it's a needle on the record. Excuse my vernacular. And as a veteran, this, I find this very distressing because I swore an oath, and it's not done yet. I'm still alive. I'm still standing. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Thank you very much. Nancy, we have Pete Suffield and then Catherine Roche. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm opposed to um, making this county a sanctuary county. Um, I believe our government and our sheriff should support all the constitutional laws of the state. And I'm going to read something that my daughter uh, posted when she heard about what her home county is doing. Gun violence has infiltrated every public space in every part of the U.S. I think about it any time I walk into a grocery store, a theater, a school, a salon. I make sure I know where the exits are. I worry about bringing my child, he's 22 months old, into these spaces, and I no longer feel comfortable in crowds. It is exhausting, terrifying, and completely avoidable. Why do we allow ourselves to live like this? Illinois recently passed an assault weapons ban, and the sheriff in my hometown publicly announced his police would not enforce it. How can we care so little for each other? My heart breaks for everyone impacted by these horrific crimes, and our whole family feels the same way, and my husband's a Vietnam veteran. You know, again, I, I would ask that, um, you know, we not express our own personal perspectives by applause or by booze. If we can do that, please. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Um, um, I thought Pete Suffield was next. Oh, I, ap I apologize, Catherine. Pete? Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for allowing me to come up here and speak, especially to this esteemed establishment and all of the uh, citizens here of McHenry County. Um, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, the Protect Illinois Communities Law does not make us any safer. Having more gun control does not prevent the type of crime that took place at either Highland Park nor the 2008 shooting at the NIU campus. As a former NIU employee, I was in that building and that shooting occurred. I saw everything from start to finish. I know exactly where Nancy Rotering and Bob Morgan are coming from, but they're bleeding off of emotion and that's cloudy or thinking. In addition to this, uh, the law makes gun owners automatic criminals. The vast majority of gun owners will not submit to registration of weapons. Recently, even though this is McHenry County, not DuPage County, the sheriff of DuPage County, Sheriff Mendrick, came out recently and said that he does not feel that this law should be enforced and will not enforce it. One of his main reasons is, is that this law requires registration of firearms of semi-automatic weapons, along with 177 other types of guns. 
that means to ensure registration, you're going to have to go to house to house to check on registration. That means putting deputies at risk. And I'm sure Sheriff sure, Adam here, along with a lot of other uh, law enforcement officers in this county as well as statewide, don't want to be put in a situation that can go to crap in uh, a matter of minutes. That's undue risk. Why would you want to do that? Lastly, in imploring upon this establishment to make McHenry County an AR sanctuary as well as a gun sanctuary in general, this bill is about throwing gun manufacturers out of business, doing it little by little. And that means we have a lot of gun shops and firing ranges in this county. If this law goes into effect, that means putting these people out on the unemployment run. And that means lower taxes. Why would you, in the name of good public management, want to intentionally throw somebody out of business? That's wrong. That's contrary to what we believe in as America and American citizens. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Catherine, and after Catherine, we have Jamie Milton, Terry Kappel, and Julie Jensen. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone again. Um, for those of you who um, are familiar, my name is Catherine. I'm a resident of McHenry County. I am also a FOIA card holder, and I'm a volunteer with Moms Demand Action as well as a parent to three young children. At the last meeting, there were statements made about taking guns away from our law-abiding citizens. However, we are seeing law-abiding citizens on paper, but that's not our reality of who is purchasing these assault-style weapons and using them against our communities. Back in our history, you're likely familiar with just 10 days ago in California, or the 4th of July parade here recently, um, in, or sorry, closer to home in Highland Park. These were all law-abiding citizens. That's what they had in common. However, they aren't law-abiding citizens cr by creating these mass murders. By weakening our gun laws, we're welcoming these events to happen in our own community. Other instances, we're very familiar with Las Vegas. 60 were killed, 413 were injured. The ATF um, determined that the firearms were all purchased legally as long as all of the guns in Nevada, California, Texas, and Utah. Uh, after the Chiefs in 2020 won their way to go to the Super Bowl, there was a shooting where two were killed, 15 were injured. This law-abiding citizen legally carried a firearm even after there were multiple um, incidents proving that he shouldn't. March 2021, Colorado Boulder grocery store, 10 killed, one injured. There was no evidence of an illegal, illegal purchase. He walked in wearing an armed, ve armed vest, holding a rifle, and he also had a 9mm semi-automatic handgun. The ATF agent describes the gun used, the AR-556. It's not a sporting rifle. It's, a hunt, it's not a hunting rifle. It's made for the military and short-range combat. I can continue to many others where every single instance the gunman was a law-abiding citizen and legally purchased all of these guns that they use to kill our community, our family members. They impact our nurses, our doctors, our children, our schools. We need to essentially treat this as a public health crisis. We've confronted public health crisis before. Our um, vehicle deaths only make up 25% of what they used to in total by regulating those laws. Smoking has fallen by 50% than what it was in the same period. So we need to treat this as we would any other major health problem. We need to ask where does it come from? How does it get amplified? Who is at risk for developing this problem? Can we learn enough to create a treatment or prevention strategy? Prevention strategies are out there. Let's use our taxpayer dollars not to challenge laws that our state has put into practice, but to enrich our community. We have nonprofits like 501c3s, organizations that cannot be lobbied. They are such as Be Smart. They're focusing solely on raising awareness to secure gun storage. We need to continue to educate because that is another form of treatment. It is a way we can create more jobs. Our local business owners, our veteran community are very knowledgeable here. Let's expand. Let's demand a culture of responsible gun ownership. And that starts with not making McHenry County a gun sanctuary. We have plenty of resources. They should not be used to bring yourself to a close advocate place. against laws that our state has already put in practice. Let's figure out a way to educate our community, amplify those small businesses that you feel those tables are being taken away from, use their knowledge, incorporate our veterans, and let's just create a gun safe community instead of a gun sanctuary community. Thank you again for your time. 
Jamie Milton. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jamie Milton. I'm a resident of Fox River Grove. I'm a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a survivor of inner city gang and gun violence where gun restrictions were the strictest. I ran for U.S. Congress during this last term because it was becoming increasingly clear to me the hour in which we are now living, a nation at the precipice of losing her precious freedom, an hour in which tyranny is knocking at our door. There used to be a time in this nation when integrity, character, and being a person of your word meant something. Each of you here today took a solemn oath to uphold and protect the U.S. Constitution. Words have meaning. An oath is a solemn and formal calling upon God to witness to the truth of what one says. When you took this oath, when you made this promise before God and man, did it mean something to you? I assure you, it meant everything to us, your constituents. To not uphold the oath taken simply means you cannot be trusted in this position and are disqualified from holding this position. The protections we currently enjoy under the banner of the U.S. Constitution are under siege. Make no mistake about it. What are you going to do about it? What practical steps are you taking to ensure integrity will stand as you walk through this test? Some of you are standing on the right side of freedom, and we the people thank you. Some of you are indifferent, which is worse than being on one side of the issue or the other, and I urge you to take a stand on the side of freedom. I urge you to uphold the oath to office. Some of you are the fox which has entered the hen house, and we the people are watching. The history of this nation will be solely dependent upon how you respond right here, right now, in this decision to make McHenry County a two-way sanctuary. Oppose HB 5471. What side of history will you be on? Recently, we heard heartbreaking stories from people who tragically lost loved ones due to gun violence, which took place at gun-free sites. A law no criminal will ever obey. Uvalad, Texas. How many lives would have been saved if there were trained armed security and staff on site to protect children and staff? Sadly, we will never know. How is a single mother to protect herself when an intruder seeks to bring her and her children harm? Do not be deceived into believing that recent legislation will stop at removing only certain arms and magazines. Oh no. History tells us a different story. Take heed. There are many solutions that can be discussed which do not include disarming law-abiding citizens, such as training armed staff to respond in an active shooter situation, addressing the increasing mental health issues, and protecting the nuclear family traditional values and morals. I appeal to each and every one of you today, honor your oath, hold your colleagues accountable to do the same, and stand firm on the right side of history. Thank you for your time. Mr. Campbell. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, I wish to talk about the constitutionality of uh, gun regulation. Uh, the Second Amendment that was pe uh, authored by James Madison uh, uh, was not intended to uh, regulate to allow an individual person to have a gun. Uh, the intent, as James Madison pointed out, was to create a counterbalance against a powerful central government uh, with a re well-regulated militia. And that statement says well-regulated and it also has the term bearing arms with both the, the militia and bearing arms are military terms. Uh, therefore, it has nothing to do with private citizens owning guns. Uh, there's also indications that it was uh, created to enforce slavery as well. Uh, uh, the right for private ownership of handguns in homes was an invent invented right in the Heller and McDonald decisions. Uh, there's no absolute right in any constitutional provision. Uh, the freedom of speech, for example, you cannot yell fire in a crowded uh, firehouse or, or movie theater. You cannot uh, divulge troop movements. You can incite violence or threaten. You cannot play music in a residential area at 3 a.m. Uh, you can't commit libel, plagiarize, commit fraud. And there are rules against obscenity, child, child pornography, and false advertising. Uh, restrictions on the right to bear arms are, as I said, are a military term. 
but if there was an absolute right to bear to own arms, then people would be able to own any kind of weapon. A uh, surface-to-air missile that threatened planes flying over, a bazooka, a machine gun, a tank. Um, uh, and the courts in the past, prior to Heller and, uh, and McDonald, have held that uh, the government has had a right to re regulate uh, weapons. And in, even in the Heller decision, it, would, it pointed out that there was a right to regulate guns in some sense. Um, what's more, what about the right of people to feel safe in their homes, safe in their, pro in their, in public areas? Uh, the reason that there is no absolute right to any constitutional amendment is because our rights overlap. And uh, uh, there has to be accommodations for uh, things like people's right to feel safe. What's more, what's at stake yes. here is the right of democracy. Can you bring your comments to a close, please? Yes. Uh, the right of democracy to rule and to address the hundred deaths by guns <coughs> every day on average in our country. We have a right through our rec elected officials to regulate and, and take care of problems in our society. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Kaplan. Julie Jensen, and after Julie, we have Dylan Roche and Ken Beave, I believe it is. B I O V, B I E V. Thank you. Good morning, McHenry County Law and Government Committee. My name is Julie Jensen. I'm a 10 year resident of the county. I want to thank you for this chance to speak with you again. I stand before you to honor the lives lost and taken by gun violence, as well as to honor the survivors of gun violence. Did you know that tomorrow, February 1st, starts National Gun Violence Survivors Week? This is a national week, and the thought of that makes my skin crawl. Our nation has so many gun deaths that we have a national week of remembrance. And for countless citizens and growing, National Gun Violence Survivors, Survivors Week is all year long. Mm -hmm. As defined by gunresponsibility.org on their website, they share that this week is a time to honor life that has been touched by gun violence, from the more than 40,000 people killed and 100,000 people wounded each year to countless others who have experienced the trauma of shooting or who have lost a loved one to the epidemic. For MomsDemandAction.org, this week is purposely selected to be symbolic because by early February, more people are killed by guns in the United States than are killed in other high-income countries in an entire calendar year. I stand before you as a member of Moms Demand Action, a grassroots movement of Americans fighting for public safety measures that can protect people from gun violence. We represent and are comprised of all Americans. Since being established 10 years ago, we have grown to over 10 million members. Illinois has over 30 local groups, and our local group in McHenry has over 1,320 registered members. Moms Demand Action and Every Town for Gun Sense in America truly focus on honoring with action for those whose lives have been taken too short, as well as survivors. Mass shootings are no secret. In the first 24 days of this year, the U.S. has had 39. Over 52 people killed and 102 injured. How many of those people rang in the new year thinking of the year ahead? Unfortunately, they didn't even make it four weeks in because they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. But were they? Celebrating a holiday, being educated, dancing? What would be wrong about that place? Mass shootings are prominent in today's headlines. Everytown.org research shows that when an assault weapon is used, a mass shooting, in a mass shooting, six times as many people are shot on average. Two minutes. The Protect Illinois Community Act, also known as HP 5471, was passed as a way to prevent massive gun violence in our state. We're the ninth state to pass such a bill. It says to ban the, assault, ban the sale of assault weapons, not all guns, to limit the size of magazines, not all magazines, and it asks for specific guns to be registered. This bill is a way to honor with action those who are no longer with us. To those who sit at their kitchen tables and see the empty chairs of loved ones, to let them know that they are seen. Same with those dealing with PTSD from their experiences. This bill embodies a message of, we can't imagine this happening to anyone else and don't wish it upon anyone else. We will truly honor with action. I ask you, if data shows the correlation to mass shootings with specific assault weapons, as our country leads the way in these heinous acts, and we have the data to show how to help prevent them, and you've been asked to dismiss it for its intention, I have the following rhetorical and sincere questions to ask. How do you plan to prevent mass shootings? If not the action in this bill, then what action? How do you define a lawful gun owner? No one is truly safe from this. I'll wrap it up. Do you Thank leave you. your home? Do your loved ones? Does anyone? I joined this organization because enough is enough is enough. We've lived through a pandemic, but this epidemic feels never ending when our glimmer of hope is potentially going to be darkened here in our own home. 
My last question is, how can a board and law enforcement not enforce the law? Thoughts and prayers only do so much. Do so much. It's action and change in, changes in policy that are essential, and the time is now. Thank you. Thank you. Dylan? Roche? Oh, pass. Pardon me? Pass. Thank you, sir. Ken? Beev? B-I-E-V? Mark Schindel, Paul Ekstrom, and after Paula we'll have Lee Ekstrom and then Don, oh dear, Spooch, Spudge? No, Lee's not going to see. Okay, then Don, thank you. My name is Paula Ekstrom, um, you want an address? 5505 Brittany Drive, McHenry. Um, I'm currently the president of the League of Women Voters of McHenry County, and I'm here to express my objection to the county board considering making county, McHenry County a gun sanctuary. Also in support of Bill 5471, um, I am troubled by the county sheriff, Mr. Tattleman, has, cho has chosen not to honor his oath of office to enforce the laws of the state of Illinois. It is the job of the courts to decide the constitutionality of the laws passed by the state legislature, and his comments that the law is unconstitutional have not yet been adjudicated. If our sheriff is unwilling to enforce the laws and, and the county board decides to make the county a sanctuary, I feel it puts his deputies, as well as the population, in danger of greater violence. All of us will be targets at parades, the many festivals and concerts this summer, or as we go about our daily lives and work at school, or simply going to the grocery store. The League is a nonpartisan organization founded over 100 years ago, and the League of Women Voters of the United States and the League of Women Voters of Illinois, after careful study, have, have um, proposed positions on gun safety. I would like to read the positions of the state of Illinois. The first one is to curb the proliferation of the private ownership of handguns and their irresponsible use and the league supports a ban on further manufacture, sale, and transportation, and Im importation of handguns and their parts. League supports restrictions, restrictive regulation of all handguns and muni ammunition, enforcement of existing regulations and strict penalties for crimes committed with a handgun. The league favors federal legislation governing the use of handguns, but will support legislation at all levels of government, meeting league criteria. League will also, will not support state or federal legislation for specific areas only, such as metropolitan or high crime areas, to ensure that handgun owners assume complete responsibility for their handguns, the league supports legislation registration of the handgun itself so that it can be traced to its owner. There should be comprehensive licensing procedures and Two gun minutes. safety education. Finger Fingerprinting and photographs plus verification of the application applicants qualifications and permit system that restricts handgun ownership. Sufficient fees should be paid by handgun owners to cover administrative costs. Ideally, local and state governments should enforce federal standards. Close, please. Um, the League also advocates asset, uh, act, restricting access to automatic and semi-automatic assault type weapons by private individuals. These weapons present a clear and unequivocal danger to public safety. Therefore, the League believes that it is essential to restrict or prohibit the press possession and sale, manufacture, importation, and transportation of semi-automatic assault type weapons for three private partnerships. Bring your comments to a close, Additionally, the sale ammunition of these weapons Four should minutes. be restricted 
or prohibited. The league favors restrictive legislation at both state and federal levels. I thank you, and I would like the members of the league that are present to stand. <coughs> Thank you. The next individual who is signed in to speak is Sharon Fetting. If you signed this document and you didn't indicate that you wanted to speak, I'm going to skip over your name. But if that's incorrect, please let me know. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sharon Fetting. Um, I live in Algonquin, Illinois, McHenry County. I don't actually have a speech prepared, but I'm never afraid to get up and speak. I um, support the sheriff on um, being a sanctuary city. We should be. Um, the other thing I was listening to, the lady back there was talking about the law-abiding citizen who owned the guns that had these um, issues. I'd like to know, what about all the shootings in Chicago? Are those all law-abiding people, too, on the weekends, killing everyone? Or what about the drug cartel in, Cali in California? who um, killed the baby and six people just a couple days ago. Um, I looked up to see what the oath of office was for our sheriff, and it says here they are required to swear the oath to protect, support, or defend the Constitution. He's doing exactly what he should be doing, and I thank you. And that's really all I have to say. I support our sheriff. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. I, Nancy? Uh, you signed up to speak on a topic that is not um, uh, cognizant, or not cognizant, not uh, germane to the gun sanctuary. Can I save you for last? Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. All right, so we have um, Susan Labai, <coughs> Kathy Christensen, oh no, Susan Labai, and then John Labai. Good morning. My name is Susan Labai. I live at 665 Greenbrier Lane in Crystal Lake. I'm a long-term McHenry County resident. And I'm here this morning to express my concern about the recent activity of the county board following the enactment of our uh, gun safety law by the Illinois legislature. I'm proud for Illinois to be among the leaders in our nation in reining in the gun violence that has become an epidemic in our nation. Um, the Second Amendment, like all constitutional amendments, is subject to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. For example, the First Amendment does not give a person the right to falsely yell fire in a crowded theater. With respect to the Second Amendment, the distribution of weapons of war, military assault weapons, in a civilian population was never anticipated. These are military weapons that should be restricted to appropriate public safety officials and military personnel. They do not belong in residential areas. This is very clear, not only in terms of what we see every day in the newspaper, but what we have experienced personally here in the county next door to us in Highland Park, where the terrible incidents of the 4th of July occurred, resulting in the deaths of five people, including the parents of a toddler who was among the 20 people who were injured. It is the situation in our country that we have divided responsibilities after a law has been enacted, as is the case here, it is the responsibility of the courts to pass on the constitutionality of it. I would therefore ask the committee to please consider tabling the resolution that is now before you until the court process has run its course and the appropriate 
sections of government have had their opportunity to discharge their responsibilities. Thank you for your attention and for the <coughs> opportunity to express my concerns. Thank you. John? And after John, we have Kathleen Anderson, Jim McGrath, and then Marty Swanson. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the Long Government Committee. Uh, the arguments the opponents of the assault weapons ban provision of the Illinois Communities Act fall into two main categories. The first argument, assault weapons and high capacity magazines are necessary for personal security. Opponents contend they need this firepower to keep them safe from fill in the blank. According to Bloomberg News, U.S. gun owners possess 393.3 million weapons, which is higher than the country's population of 330 million. That makes the United States the only country in the world with more civilian-owned firearms than people. Using this logic, it would dictate that the U.S. should be the safest country in the world since we have the most weapons of any civilian population in the world. But quite the contrary, the U.S. had 3.9 violent gun deaths per 100,000 people in 2019. This is eight times as high as Canada, nearly 300 times higher than the U.K. The higher level of gun violence keeps the U.S more on par with nations that are dealing with drug, human trafficking, and political instability. Therefore, it is a myth that assault weapons and high capacity magazines are needed for your personal safety. Quite the contrary, the more guns, the more violence, the less personal safety. The second argument, and you've heard this already, it is my absolute right under the Second Amendment to own an assault rifle period, or as your resolution before you states, quote, citizens are in the best position to decide what, if any, instrument they choose to defend themselves. Really. What if I lay a Glock 19 with the ETS 35 round 9 millimeter magazine on the table right here, right now? It's my right under the Second Amendment, isn't it? I can own whatever weapon I want, and I should be able to show it whenever I want to. Would you feel safer? I don't think so. I think you'd feel pretty intimidated. That's why under the Illinois Firearms Concealed Carry Act, you cannot carry a weapon into any building under control of a local unit of government. My point being that the Second Amendment is not an absolute, absolute right. It is subject to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions that has been promulgated for over 200 years of Supreme Court decisions. So the absolute right to own a weapon, whatever weapon I want, and show wherever I want, is also a myth. Can you bring your comments to a yes. close, please? So Thank you. I believe banning the sale of assault weapons and restricting magazines to under 15 bullets is a reasonable restriction given the epidemic levels of gun violence in this country. If not this, where, where do you draw the line? When is enough enough? Also, I would encourage our sheriff to perhaps contact Sheriff James Mendrick of the Page County, who recently, with the Page County Chair, issued a statement and said, saying that he will indeed enforce the Protect Illinois Community Act. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Kathleen Anderson. Morning. Good morning. Kathleen Anderson, 8695 Carly Court, Huntley. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you today. I'm asking the board to please adop adopt the resolution to make the county a gun sanctuary. The people who support the unconstitutional bill are appealing to our fear of more gun violence and to the outrage and heartbreak <coughs> over recent mass shootings. This bill does absolutely nothing to prevent gun violence. The bill is simply a means to take <coughs> guns away from law-abiding <coughs> citizens. Simply put, it's a bait and switch. Guns are no more the issue than a car is the issue of a DUI <coughs> death. If anyone was 
sincerely concerned about preventing crime, there would be bills on mental health and drug rehabilitation. There would be <coughs> stiffer penalties for crimes committed and criminals would be jailed. The criminals are already breaking the law. What's gonna get them to turn their weapons in? They're not. Please listen to the pleas of the county and uphold the Constitution and pass this resolution. Thank you. Thanks. Jim McGrath. Thank you. I'm Jim McGrath. I am a resident of, of Barrington. I'm also the Illinois State uh, Gun Violence Prevention Specialist for the Illinois League of Women Voters. But I'm here today to speaking uh, from, uh, for, for the Bombs Demand Action. Uh, you're all familiar with what the Second Amendment says. I'm here in support of HB 5471 and speaking against gun sanctuary. I've been involved with gun violence since Sandy Hook, which was committed with an assault weapon. That atrocity was committed with an assault weapon. Um, in the, the Supreme Court case decided in 2022, just last year, the Bruin case, in a concurrent opinion, Justice Kavanaugh, who was joined by Chief Justice John Roberts, stated, like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not, is not unlimited. From Blackstone through the 19th century cases, commentators and courts routinely explained that the right was not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever, in any manner whatsoever, and for any purpose whatsoever. This is last year's Supreme Court. They went on to say, we also recognize another important limitation of the right to keep and carry arms. Miller, another Supreme Court case, uh, explained that the sort of weapons protected by the Second Amendment were those in common use at the time. We think that limitation is fairly supported by historical tradition of prohibiting and carrying dangerous and unusual weapons. Regarding your, your the local community. In Sheriff Tatelman's press release announcing he would not enforce uh, uh, HB 5471, he stated, duties I accepted upon being sworn into office was to protect the rights provided to all of us in the Constitution. But our rights are defined by our laws. Our rights are defined by our laws. So if you're not enforcing the laws, you're not defending our rights. He goes on to declare that HB 5471 is unconstitutional, as you should already know whether a law is constitutional or not is determined by the courts, not by law enforcement, not by the county board. So please support the enforcement of HB 5471. Please do not render McHenry County a gun sanctuary county. Vote to save lives. This should not be a partisan issue. So is children being slaughtered in classrooms, people at concerts, Theaters, shopping centers, churches, acceptable, collateral, to support gun rights? I hope not. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Swanson? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Marty Swanson. I live at 5615 North Ridgeway Road in <coughs> Ringwood. I've been in McHenry County 55 years, so a little while. Um, something I haven't heard spoken by the um, gun advocates is the restriction built into the Second Amendment. It begins a well-ordered militia. <sighs> Having assault weapons in the homes of private citizens, not part of a well-ordered militia. That's, you know. Um, above and beyond that, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it seems to me that the sheriff and anyone takes an oath to support the law. I don't see any option built into that oath. You support the laws or you don't support the laws, whichever. If you don't, you shouldn't be sheriff, that's for sure. Thank you. Next up, we have Russell Friend, James Tomasello, and then Bonnie Castle. Good 
Rogers. Russell Friend first, please. Yeah, up here. Thank you, sir. All right. I am Russell Friend. I live at 45 Chelsea Lane in Cary. I'm a retired vice president of the Northern Trust, where I worked in risk analytics to create documents for submission to the Federal Reserve. I'm here to support a resolution opposing HB 5471 and its repeal in the Illinois State Legislature. I support Sheriff Tattleman's statement, as well as statements by 80 other county sheriffs regarding this unconstitutional law. We need to be reminded of our history. In 1629, King Charles I of England dissolved Parliament for 11 years, making clear his distaste for dealing with them and believed he had a royal prerogative allowing him to rule. That motivated almost 400,000 people to leave England for British colonies in America. My direct ancestor, John Friend, arrived in Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1637, settled in the Gloucester and Wenham area, and sent for his family the following year. They were educated and highly literate. In the following century, my direct ancestors helped establish a new nation when they were called to action in April of 1775. My great-grandfather served in the U.S. Navy during the Civil War. My father and uncle served our nation in World War II. My father also served in Korea. They too would oppose HB 5471 because they understood what an authoritarian government could do to a nation. As a gun owner, I am a certified NRA rifle and shotgun instructor, a civilian marksmanship program range officer, and a former chairman of the ISRA's junior high power rifle program. I recently joined the board of directors of the McHenry Sportsman's Club. I train and practice regularly. Like me, the vast majority of gun owners are law-abiding citizens who believe in their responsible use. The new law will do nothing to protect Illinois communities, only punish and deprive citizens of their Second Amendment right. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. James Tomasello. I'm pass. Thank you, sir. Bonnie Castle. And after Bonnie, we have Tim Beck and then uh, Carrie Johnson. Good morning. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't planning on making a speech today at all. I just wanted to come and um, support our uh, sheriff, I'm really proud of our sheriff for sticking up for us right now. Um, something happened yesterday about <clears throat> a mile away from my house. Uh, four guys came and backed up their uh, van into a, a garage and um, they knocked down the back door and uh, they, they didn't get caught, but I, I like to protect my family. I, I think it's so important to be able to have that right to protect our family. Um, I also took a gun class about a month ago and the instructor said, how long does it take, how many seconds does it take for someone to kick in your door? And I, I'm like, what? Kick in my door? Yeah, how many seconds does it take for someone to kick in your door? I like to protect my family. We had five conceal and carry classes out of my house over the years. There were senior citizens that are afraid, families, mothers, um, with open borders coming across. We don't know who's in our country, who's coming in our state. I want to protect my family. Um, I think it's so important that um, our sheriff is sticking up for us. Um, one of the things that um, I wanted to put in here, hold on one second. I grew up in Chicago. There's the strictest gun laws in Chicago, but yet there's so many people being killed in Chicago. Criminals are going to get the guns. They're going to get the guns. I don't want to be a sitting duck and not being able to protect my family. Like some of these other countries, like Australia, and what so many countries are taking the guns away from their citizens. When are we gonna wake up? Open borders, we don't know who's here. We gotta protect our family. I'm really proud of you, Sheriff Cattleman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll add this to the record as well. Thank you. 
So, uh, as the committee knows, I emailed you my comments from the December and January board meetings. And so, you know uh, my concerns about word manipulation and how uh, the media can be used to sway people's emotions. But today, I want to pose a series of questions. For those of you who want to follow along, who is aware that Highland Park had and has an assault weapon ban on the books since 2013? Who's aware that there were multiple visits to the Cremo home by Highland Park law enforcement during 2019? that during one of those visits, multiple weapons were removed from the home. Who's aware that Robert Cremo Jr., Bobby Cremo's father, was charged with seven counts of reckless conduct for his role in helping his son, underage son, obtain a weapon? Who believes there were several unfortunate failures by various government officials in processing paperwork that enabled Bobby Cremo to obtain possession of his weapon. <coughs> Who believes Bobby Cremo perpetrated a heinous act? <laughs> Who believes Highland Park's assault weapon ban was effective in preventing that act? <laughs> <laughs> Who believes that HB 5471 will be any more effective against evil than the Highland Park ban. Okay. So, who believes our county board members in this committee should send a strong, unambiguous message to Springfield that unalienable rights of millions of law-abiding citizens in Illinois shall not be infringed just so that other people can have a false sense of safety? We the people realize that simply passing a resolution is not going to stop J.B. Pritzker from doing what he intends to do. We also realize that HB 5471 will not stop an evil person from perpetrating a, hein a heinous act that they intend to do. So contrary to the word manipulations we're all hearing, we're not asking for a gun sanctuary. Or, or a sanctuary for guns. We're asking for a sanctuary, or you can call it a constitutional safe haven for law-abiding citizens. The Second Amendment is under constant and incremental attack by the left. We've all heard the warnings. If it ultimately fails, then none of our rights under the Constitution are safe. And that's the kind of safety that I would like to, to retain. Bring your comments to a close, okay. please. The last pair. So we are the people who are going to continue to reply, rely upon the judicial system to do the right thing and eventually overturn HB 5471. In the meantime, we're asking this committee and the full board to send a clear and unambiguous message to J.B. Kurtzker in the Illinois legislature. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie Johnson. And then I believe um, Keen Nielsen. John Collini. Okay. You said Ken Nielsen? Yes. I did. Okay. Please. Make sure you speak loudly so everyone can hear you. I'll do my best. Thank you. My name is Ken Nielsen. I'm a longtime McHenry County resident. I'm a veteran, retired police officer, and homeschooling father of four. The role of government the role of government is to protect and to secure our individual rights and liberties. And when it is threatened, you are required to respond. And it is threatened. And those who do not respond in the protection of our rights and liberties are in violation of their oath and should resign from their office. 
It is not the responsibility of government to be our nanny. You are not elected for that purpose. That is not your job. For those who disagree, I suggest you look up Warren versus the District of Columbia, 1981. A lot of you will be surprised. Now, there are some here who fear and that fear is driving in a misguided direction. I fear heights, but yet I do not demand others not to build a structure higher than two stories because of my fear of heights. Statistics were thrown out. Well, according to the FBI's latest collection of data, twice as many people are killed by hands and feet than they are rifles. A lot of statistics come out. It reminds me of a comment from Mark Twain. That most people who use it, statistics, use it like a drunk uses a lampshade. More for support than illumination. There's a lot more to it than goes to that. Two minutes. It is your responsibility to send that message when our constitutional rights are threatened. The sheriff has taken a stand, and we expect the McHenry County Board to take a stand as well. Now, some say that we should enforce the laws because it's by the state and let the courts sort it out. There was a time period in this country when slavery was legal and passed through, passed through muster up through the United States Supreme Court. Using that same thought process as some of those folks, continue with slavery. Do not fight against it. Let the courts sort it out. Heinous, disgusting. Liberty can be trying, it is not for the faint-hearted. History has made that clear. Now I will leave you with a quote by Sam Adams. If you love wealth greater than liberty, the tranquility of servitude greater than the animated contest of liberty, go home from us in peace. We seek not your counsel nor your arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that you were ever our countrymen. I yield my time and thank you. Thank you. John, John Collins? You're not supposed thank to clap. You're not supposed to clap. More talk. I, again, I, I would ask all of you to show the body, which includes you, the respect we have given everyone else. Hold your applause, hold your booing, hold your comments. That's what the public comment period is for. If you wish to speak, sign up. Mr. Collins, please. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, the committee members, for this opportunity to speak this morning. My name is John Collins. I'm a 23-year resident of Crystal Lake, residing in District True at 529 Monarch Drive. I'm here to speak this morning in opposition to the resolution opposing HB 5471. I'm not going to spend time on numbers and percentages. I would hope that the committee members have taken the time to educate themselves on HB 5471 and, and the underlying data that supports its need. Instead, I'm going to focus on the resolution itself. This resolution is based on falsehoods, fear, and misinformation. Its use of incendiary language throughout the resolution is frankly beneath the dignity of this committee and the McHenry County Board. Words like forcefully, perpetuated against, denounces, threatens, and others are designed for one purpose, to invoke anger and mistrust. By doing so, their use does not allow for an honest, thoughtful conversation that would provide for a better outcome or pause to evaluate what is really the right thing to do. By focusing only on, some, on the semi-automatic ban, the resolution continues to stoke fear and anger. The resolution fails to recognize other aspects of the bill, including banning switches that turn handguns into assault weapons and improving red flag laws to better protect individuals and the public. There were also companion bills signed that ban ghost guns, strengthen gun trafficking laws, and gun transfer laws. Finally, the law does not disarm or make felons out of citizens. It does not ban the possession of semi-automatic rifles, nor will, nor will it negatively impact the economy of this county. 
One of the many challenges faced by the county is declining population. Passing this type of resolution will give young families pause to selecting McHenry County. Most people in Illinois support this bill, including many Republicans. They see the need to get a handle on gun violence. Two minutes. Passing this resolution only sends a message that McHenry County is not concerned with protecting its citizens. I fear the day that some mass shooting visits our county. If it does, and this resolution passes, this committee and the board will bear a level of responsibility. No amount of thoughts and prayers, no amount of thoughts and prayers will take the place of that. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Carol Malmgren, Malmgren, Bruce Johnson, and Lisa Peck. Carol, I'm sorry, I butchered your name. Pretty good. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, good morning, Madam Chairman. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Good morning, county board members. And hello, neighbors. I really enjoy hearing all of our comments this morning and that we can do this in an open way. Um, I want to reiterate the gentleman that just preceded me on the inflammatory language that is used in the resolution that you are considering today. I oppose this resolution uh, because many of the tenets of the resolution do not pertain to me. They do not uh, reflect my beliefs as a citizen of McHenry County. Um, I find uh, the language to be quite inflammatory um, and saying things that I do not support. Moreover, the resolution then for the action of the committee once uh, they vote on this is to prevent funding and add a line item. So there's really not any um, teeth in this resolution. It just um, is more of a branding or a proclamation um, that supposedly would represent the uh, views of the McHenry County residents, which it does not, in my case specifically. So I would oppose this resolution and um, um, hope that you would consider uh, letting our courts and our legislation process review the uh, law that has been passed by our governor who has been elected by the people of the state of Illinois and let those um, um, processes play out um, to their end and support the laws of the state of Illinois. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Johnson. Good morning. My name is Bruce Johnson. I'm a resident of uh, Trout Valley, Illinois. I'm also the uh, co-chair for the Algonquin Township Republican Party. I've been asked to uh, read this resolution to the record uh, and see for yourself if this is inflammatory. So. Uh, so this is a re resolution from the Executive Committee of the Republican Party of McHenry County, Illinois, passed by the Executive Committee of the Republican Party of the McHenry County of McHenry County on January 15, 2023, and submitted for consideration of adoption to the McHenry County Board. Whereas the Executive Committee of the Republican Party of McHenry County recognizes that a massive unconstitutional gra gun grab has commenced in Illinois with the passage of HB 5471, Protect Illinois Community Act. And whereas the committee, executive committee of the Republican Party of McHenry County recognizes that more that 70 or more counties in the state of Illinois have declared themselves to be constitutional safe haven counties for gun ownership, and whereas the executive committee of the Republican Party of McHenry County group wishes to be on record as favoring the adoption of similar constitutional safe haven statuses for McHenry County. Now, therefore, be it resolved. The Executive Committee of the Republican Party of McHenry County does hereby call upon the McHenry County Board to adopt a resolution to make McHenry County a Second Amendment constitutional safe haven county by passage of the resolution as follows. Resolution of the County Board of the County of McHenry, Illinois. Resolution opposing the General Illinois General Assembly HB 5471 Protect Illinois Community Act where the 102nd Illinois General Assembly desires to re re strict the individual right of the U.S. citizens as protected by the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, whereas the right of people to keep and bear arms is guaranteed as an individual right under the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution and under the Constitution of State of Illinois, and whereas the right of the people to keep and bear arms for the, 
the defense of life, liberty, and property is regarded as an unalienable right by the people of McHenry County, Illinois. And whereas the people have a God-given obligation to provide for the common defense, and whereas a well-armed citizenry is the best protection against tyrannical government, and whereas the people of McHenry County, Illinois, derive economic benefit from all safe forms of firearm recreation, hunting and shooting conducted with the McHenry County, using all types of firearms allowable under the United States Constitution, and whereas the HB 5471 Protect Illinois Community Act is in violation of the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, allowing responsible law-abiding citizens a right to keep and bear arms and ammunition, and Whereas a RAND review 2020 of gun control studies concluded that there is inconclusive evidence for the effect of assault weapons bans. And whereas McHenry County Board being elected to represent the people of McHenry County. Bruce, can you bring your comments to a close? And, and if, you, if, you, if, if it's long, why don't you just hand us the resolution and we'll make that available to the full board. Okay. So uh, whereas the Illinois House of Representatives and the Illinois Senate being elected by the people of the state of Illinois and being duly sworn by their oath of office to uphold the U.S. Constitution and the Constitution of the state of Illinois, whereas the governor of Illinois being elected to represent the people of the state of Illinois and being duly sworn by your oath of office to uphold the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the state of Illinois, whereas HB 5471 Protect Illinois Community Act infringes upon the right of, to keep and bear arms of commonly owned firearms by the individual citizens of McHenry County. I'm going to bring it to a close. Um, so be it further resolved, the McHenry County Board expects all elected officers of the McHenry County to support and enforce this resolution and support the actions of the McHenry County Sheriff regarding this matter. Be it further resolved that the McHenry County Board demands that the Illinois General Assembly cease further actions restricting the right of people in Illinois to keep and bear arms, and hereby demand that the Governor of Illinois veto all such legislation which restricts the right of the people to keep and bear arms. And I can just close it out with this. Uh, respectfully submitted by Jeffrey Thorson, our chairman, Republican Party of the of McHenry County, Illinois. And I'll leave this with you for Please. consideration. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Peck, we do, we, we've, we've got received copies. Right. So okay. I, but we'll put Here this in the, those, those, those are yours. Okay, we'll put great. this in the record right. so that thank it's you. there. Yeah, thank you. There was one to the floor. Good morning to you, McHenry County board members and the residents of McHenry County. My name is Lisa Peck and I live in Spring Grove with my husband and three children. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to participate in the process of drafting and hopefully passing a resolution to become a constitutional Second Amendment sanctuary county for law-abiding gun owners. Currently, of the 102 counties in Illinois, over 80 counties have had their constitutional sheriffs stand up for their residents' rights as protected in the Constitution and state that they will not enforce HB 5471 Public Act 102 1116 on the premise that it goes against the oath of office that each one of them has taken to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and the state of Illinois. The sheriffs took the following oath upon being sworn into office. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. I understand that not only did all of the sheriffs elected take this oath, but you as board members have also done that as well. As your oath is not the same as the sheriff's, yours does also commit you to upholding the Constitution of the United States and the state of Illinois. This is what you would have sworn to uphold, promising this to the residents of McKinney County that elected you to represent them and their rights. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will favorably discharge the duties of the Office of County Board Member and Library Trustee according to the best of my ability. With this said, there is clear and substantial constitutional framework that I believe all of the constitutional sheriffs that have stood against Governor Pritzker's passing of HB 5471 have considered in upholding the Bill of Rights and our Second Amendment to the Constitution of the right to bear arms in order for us to remain secure and free. Um, this, this framework can be seen in federal law um, regarding the fact of upholding this, the Constitution for our right to bear arms. 
In the Constitution, it states the Second Amendment, a well-regulate militia, which is not military, it is private citizens, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. By passing this resolution and making McHenry a sanctuary county, it sends a strong message to the state legislature that the people represented it through their county government are opposed to ineffective and unconstitutional gun control measures. The resolution accomplished several things. It's an official formal statement of where McHenry stands. It helps hold the local politicians to their word, and it shows which politicians are truly pro-constitution or not. Lastly, I will conclude my statement with the idea that many anti-gun individuals have stated that this gun control legislation is not the state trying to take away any individual's right to keep and bear arms, but necessary to avoid future tragedies such as the Highland Park 4th of July parade shooting. It is exactly that. By requiring law-abiding gun owners who have already followed all of the steps in the state of Illinois to now register legally obtained firearms and limit the types of guns and ammunition they can purchase is the final step to infringing upon our rights under the protection of the U.S. Constitution and the Second Amendment. The current situation in the state of Your Illinois around gun control please. should be used as an opportunity to fight gun crime in all areas where deficits lie, such as in the city of Chicago where gun crime is at an all-time high due to illegal gun possession by its residents. Thank, Thank you, you for letting me make the statement. Up next we have Ed Gogol, Brian Myers, <coughs> and Brock Friedman. Uh, thank you, members of the committee and the public. Um, my name is Ed Gogol. I live in Crystal Lake, South End, 1804 Louisville Lane. Um, I think I should start by quoting uh, Supreme Court Justice Warren Berger. He was a Republican. The gun lobby's interpretation of the Second Amendment is one of the greatest pieces of fraud. I repeat, fraud ever perpetrated on the American people by the special interest groups, NRA and gun manufacturers, that I've ever seen in my lifetime. The very language of the Second Amendment refutes any argument that it was ever intended to guarantee every citizen an unfettered right to any weapon of war he or she desires. Uh, perhaps the 2008 Heller decision by the Supreme Court. The Second Amendment right is not unlimited. It is not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever, in any manner whatsoever, and for whatever purpose. Um, it's very long been illegal in Illinois and in the rest of the country to own a machine gun. It's illegal to own a bomb. It's illegal to own brass knuckles. It's illegal to carry a firearm into a courthouse, into this building. We put reasonable regulations to keep us safe. This law allows you to have, you can have a gun with a magazine that holds 10, a rifle that holds 10 shots. You can have a pistol with a magazine that holds 15 shots. You can have as many of them as you want. That seems to me plenty for self-defense. The guns that this law is trying to prevent an increase in, not to take them away for anything, but to prevent an increase, these are better termed mass killing machines, mass murder machines. There's an old saying that a conservative is a liberal who's been mugged. Uh, in this particular case, I think for some of you who are, uh, maybe we should call you gun radicals or gun absolutists, maybe it'll take a mass shooting that affects you before you finally see the light. Um, personally, I have a good friend, uh, Bruce Suntime, whose wife Jackie was killed in Highland Park. I don't want to see any more weapons of war. That, the shooter in Highland Park shot 84 bullets in less than 60 seconds. I submit to you, that's a little more than you need for self-defense. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Myers? I'm going to sit. I hope I can <clears throat> make myself heard. My name is Brian Myers, uh, 8312 West Hillside Road, Crystal Lake, Richfield resident, retired teacher, former candidate, probably future candidate. Uh, recently, I spoke to the full board on the assault weapons ban. 
Uh, today I would like to address the proposal for <coughs> gun sanctuary. Sanctuary is a word commonly associated with human rights, human life, and sometimes protection and of the guarantees and the way of life presented by our Constitution. Some would have you believe that this proposal uh, falls within those parameters by referencing the Second Amendment. The radicals who have made this proposal deny the existence of limits or red lines. An individual could have his own howitzer or a Takums or cruise missile, just as he needs not a hunting rifle or a shotgun, but an AR-15. No mention of the 13th, 14th, or 15th Amendments or any of the other neglected rights in the Constitution and its amendments. Why? Because the whole Constitution doesn't feed the money-making plans of the gun shops, who consider not just home defense, but massive overkill <coughs> necessary for their business plans. Does not enable the fever dreams of right-wing extremists who prefer civil war, counter-revolution, and insurrection to the system that Winston Churchill once said was the worst government in the world except for all the others that have been tried. Do not reject the loyalty to equality and the proposition that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish, words spoken by our son of Illinois, Abraham Lincoln, uh, for loyalty to a product, not a person, a product whose purpose is not home defense or hunting, but the enrichment of the gun industry and gun shops and the enabling of assassination, political violence, and <coughs> insurrection. If, if out of fear you support radical proposals such as this one so that you won't get primaried, you will not see, as it is written in the Gospel of Luke, that God's people see that they get justice, and quickly. You will see shame when you look in the mirror or read the newspaper and have nothing to say to your children and grandchildren. Thank you very much. Brock? Yes. Thank you, sir. My name is Brock Friedman. I do not live in McHenry County, unfortunately. It's a very nice county. I'm, I live in Cook County, and I am here today to represent the voice of the voiceless because in Cook County, our county board hates us. I know this because I was the liberal who was attacked, not mugged, but attacked, on a bright sunny day in a crowded parking lot about a quarter mile from my home um, with lots of people around. and the attacker was a wandering child rapist who engages in random acts of violence for the last 25, 30 years, um, in and out of prison over and over and over. After I was attacked and I tried to de-escalate, I tried to call the police, he punched the phone out of my hand and said, ha, call the police. And then he went for my throat. And then I had to fight him barehanded. I'm a veteran, but I was just out there shopping and I wasn't prepared. But luckily, luckily, um, I could hit him with a shopping cart. And, and try to keep backing up. And this went on and on and on. It'll be seared in my mind for the rest of my life because they let him back out after I sent him to jail. And then they got, he'd get back out of jail again and again and again and again and again. When I called my county board and I called my county president, her office told me when I asked, why are you trying to charge an extra fee on a weapon that I want to defend my family with, they told me, you're responsible for all the suffering in Chicago. I live 30 miles from Chicago. I said, I was flabbergasted and I said, what, uh, what do I do if this person who they made me sit next to in court decides he wants revenge because now I know his whole history and he likes revenge. What happens if he comes to my house and I find him in the middle of the night over my babies? And that person, the county board president's aide told me, you should run away. You should blow a whistle. And that turned me fully into not just a conservative, but a Second Amendment advocate. I am here as the harbinger, the harbinger of what could be if you allow the, the rights of people here to be trampled. You have a decision to make. You've heard a lot of good people speak on the Constitution. You've also heard a lot of garbage. I'm a historian for five years as an undergrad. And, and then grad school, and I can, in American history, I've studied the Constitution, I can tell you these people from Moms Demand Action, they're full of garbage. And they're making up words. 
and they're every time they want you to think assault weapon, assault weapon, assault weapon. That's garbage. Don't be swayed. Think about the real people, the real decisions, people that have a right to protect themselves in their homes and where they travel. You have a right, I have a right. People who do not have a right to self-defense, by definition, are slaves. You have that choice before you to make it. It's a hard choice, and I, I don't, you know, I wouldn't want to be in your seat. Three minutes. You can protect us or not. Thank you for hearing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next up, we have Dan Cray, John, Kara, and it kind of fades off, but John, you're of Lakewood, and then Amanda Hall. Dan Cray. Thank you. John, Kara, and I, I'm serious, I can't read the Thank you so much. You kind of faded away on me a little. And Amanda, you're next then. John, please. I'm John Cavalunas from Lakewood, Illinois. As a victim of armed robbery, where the robbery pointed a gun at my face and told me to hand over my wallet. I am no fan of guns at all. But I understand that hunters and people worried about their home defense, home protection, have other ideas. And I believe compromise is often wise. To anyone who says I should have had a gun for protection, I can assure you that in that rapidly unfolding robbery, I would have been shot dead if I had reached for a gun. So rapid fire killing machines and cop killing bullets have no place for civilians in a rational society not blinded by an absolute interpretation of the Second Amendment. Lake County Sheriff John Eilberg said it well, quote, assault style rifles are nothing more than killing machines and they have no place in a civilized society. These weapons of war do not belong on our streets. They're used to kill our police used to kill innocent people, and used to inflict maximum carnage on their victims. I, along with other Lake County leaders, have heard from thousands of people who support this legislation. I stand with the people of Lake County and will do everything, always do everything in my power to keep you safe." End of quote. The United States, with less than 5% of the world's population, has 46% of the world's civilian-owned guns, according to the most recent survey by the Switzerland-based Small Arms Survey. The United States also has the highest homicide rate by firearms of the world's most developed nations. This is from statistics in the Council of Foreign Relations article. We have more guns than people. At 120 guns per 100 people, with small war in Yemen at 53 per 100 people, the next closest nation. Guns are not the only reason people are killed, but ready access to guns is dangerous when people are raging, mentally ill, or criminals. I oppose any attempt at creating a gun sanctuary in McHenry County where gun laws can be ignored, where the county sheriff who is in position to uphold our laws decides not to enforce gun laws like the recently passed Protect Illinois Communities Act. Thank you, sir. Amanda, Paul. Hi, everyone. Um, I appreciate your patience. You've been listening to a lot of people today, and I know it's not easy, especially sometimes hearing some of the things that people say. Um, I know all of you, most of you, since I've seen all of you for two or three years and coming here, have seen my daughter. She's practically grown up here. Listening to conversations and people speak up for other people's rights. She's heard people come here with bigoted and racist remarks sometimes and understands that the hatred that we live in is here in our society. But she also understands and sees the love others have when they stand up for one another and their basic rights. She's never worn ear protection during a meeting. But she is wearing it today. Because how do you tell your own child that the leading killer of guns a leading killer of the leading, sorry, leading killer of children are guns, and that your community wants to make where we live a gun sanctuary. 
I'm also an educator, one that taught overseas, even in the remote subsistence villages in Kodiak, Alaska, where they have the biggest bears in the world and everyone carries guns. Where kids grow up with guns and hunting and where subsistence living is a lifestyle. And yet they have the same fear that kids all over the lower 48 have. My third grader said it best at the time. What if someone gets angry and comes to our school? Everyone here has guns too. Why must educators, when tasked with so much to help support children, have to fear for our lives and that of our students? Is a gun sanctuary going to make us safer? So many educators have left the field due to the disrespect of parents and the constant demands of COVID. Will McHenry County be able to hang on to its educators if we become a gun sanctuary when so many schools here already don't have enough educators? It was mentioned earlier today that we need more armed personnel to protect our students and educators, but the data does not back up that claim. In 2021, a study conducted by researchers from the University at Albany and RAND examined data from U.S. schools between 2014 to 2018 to evaluate the impact of school resource officers. It found that school resource officers do not prevent school shootings or gun-related incidents. After every mass and school shooting, I text a friend of mine. You see, my friend was a student that survived Columbine in Colorado decades ago. She is still triggered, still going through survivor's guilt, still traumatized. If we continue down this path, a mass shooting will find us. It's found so many other small communities, and we are not impervious to this insane epidemic. Guns do not make us safer. It's proven. I oppose this gun sanctuary resolution, and at the very least, I ask that the sheriff follow the law until there comes such a time when a judge rolls in favor of the lawsuit filed by McHenry County State's Attorney Patrick Keneally to challenge the Illinois Assault Weapons Ban. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Tony Franklin, Tony Santanello, and then Mike Danielson. Good morning. A lot of you know me. Actually, a lot of you have been in my classes. I am in a, an NRA instructor. My name is Tanya Franklin. I live at 5513 Swanson Road in Woodstock. I have been a resident of Illinois for 14 years. I am a fish out of water from Florida, and I miss it tremendously. Where's our son? I respect all of your opinions. It is a very emotional situation. But I can tell you, passing more laws that are unconstitutional are not saving this state. I respect everybody's opinion, but facts do matter. And if you truly care about life and how many lives are taken with guns, how about the most sacred place in the world, a woman's womb? More babies were murdered in the last 50 years than every single war in the world. Amen. I care. I have been a healthcare professional, EMT, a nurse, a teacher since 2002. I have taught for 30 years in CPR saving lives. What saves lives? Learn to stop to bleed. Learn to take a class in CPR and learn to take a gun class. So many of you could take a free class with me. I would love to educate you on the guns and their purpose. Guns, there is no such thing as an assault weapon. The unelected bureaucrats of the ATF have defined what they consider an assault weapon. What is an AR? An Armalite rifle. Smith & Wesson, ACP, a Colt pistol, uh, automatic Colt pistol. It is a name. And they took the name and they changed it. This is not a word soup. I am not going to allow anyone to pass another law to take away one of my rights. I live next to you all. I have a gun range in my property. We are very respectable. 14 grandchildren, we teach them all to shoot. None of them would pick up a gun. They know the power of a gun. A tiny little 22 will not take somebody out. I teach anatomy and physiology, medical law and ethics medical terminology. None of the, a little tiny 22 will not take somebody out. Your artery is bigger than that. 
take a gun class, get educated, please get some more information. Education, not legislation, is what is going to save our country. Please stand up with us. I know many of you. I know I do support you 100%. Thank you very much. I did not campaign for you, but I will in the future. I appreciate everybody's time here. I, really, seriously, we deserve to have that right. If you don't want the right, it's OK. I'm not telling you you need to have it. But know that your neighbors will stand up and defend you. Our daughter was run over on Je July 31st by a crazed maniac drug addict. For no reason, he tried to kill her in front of our three grandkids. Our Ms. grandson, Franklin, who was 13 years please. old, was then mugged by four men in a van in Chicago. They live in Beverly. I do know crime. I've had a gun held to my head. My brother was killed on a motorcycle. I got a motorcycle and took a class. Ms. I don't want to ban them. That's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Again, can we please? act appropriately and can I remind you can I remind you the, the camera and the speaker so that we can play a record of this meeting is this way sorry I didn't know there was a camera I, so please we record all of our meetings and show them thereafter so please face the committee it'll serve you well um, next up Tony thank you sir Good morning, thank you. My name is Tony Santanello. Uh, I'm a McHenry County resident for a little over 21 years now. And um, I'm coming to you in support uh, of the resolution opposing House Bill 5471. Sanctuary states and cities, open borders, allowing drugs, weapons, gang members, and other criminals into our country. Laws passed legalizing marijuana, ignoring federal law, vilified the police, defunded the police, elected liberal prosecutors that refused to enforce the law or reduce charges, but don't forget the Safety Act in Illinois. That was opposed by a majority of county state's attorneys. Gun-free zones, where most mass shootings occur. The highest crime rates are in cities run by Democrats that have the strictest gun control and soft on crime policies. Question, what have Democrats done to make us safer? I say nothing. Now somebody eloquently read the Oath of Enlistment a little bit earlier, so I'm not gonna read it again. I took it many years ago, but I'm gonna call one line says that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulations and the Uniform Code for Military Justice. So help me God. Okay, if you served in the Armed Forces of the United States, you took that oath. It does not expire. You obey a direct order unless that order is unlawful, such as shooting non-combatants, women and children. Sheriff Talon and over 80 Illinois sheriffs are upholding their oath of office and supporting us in defending our rights. Persons elected to public office take a similar oath. I would argue the same principle regarding unlawful orders applies to those elected officials. The Second Amendment is very clear. It's been confirmed by the courts in the Heller decision, most recently the Bruin decision. Over 80 Illinois counties are Second Amendment counties. Over 62% of the United States counties are Second Amendment counties. When I listen to Sh Sheriff Tettleman, or hear his name, three words that are extremely important to me come to mind. It's honor, courage, and commitment. Sheriff Tettleman is showing all that by standing up and staying true to his oath of office. The McHenry County board members should do the same, support the resolution, and make McHenry County a Second Amendment county. It's three minutes. Bring your comments to a close, please. Pardon me? Bring your comments to okay. a close, please. I ask all opposed to McHenry County becoming a Second Amendment county. If a law were signed by Governor Pritzker <coughs> regarding your First Amendment rights being curtailed, 
or you could no longer go to your preferred house of worship, or probable cause was no longer needed for the police to search your house, would you be willing to wait months or years for the courts to sort it out, or would you want your sheriff to stand for you and not enforce it? Lastly, he who gives up freedom for security deserves neither. I don't know about anybody else in this room. I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. Thank you. Mike Danielson. Dennis Brinkman. Yo. <clears throat> I'm Dennis Brinkman, Harvard, Illinois. I didn't write a speech. Sorry, I just didn't do that, but we're, I understand everybody here, we're all here for the same purpose, safety. How to get that? Removing guns from good citizens is not the way. The bad guys won't turn them in. They'll keep them, and you can't depend on the, the cops are good. The cops can't be there to defend us. There are bad cops. Sorry. Don't <laughs> But that's a small percent of 1% of the cops. You won't see it in McHenry County, I'm definitely sure. But Oregon, you can't defund the police. Oregon found out that that doesn't work, okay? Without, without the peacekeepers, we're in big doo-doo. And uh, now in Chicago, the cops can get personally sued, personally sued for making an arrest. And so where is the crime? Yeah. And you don't register your guns. The NRA thing, you register your guns, the next step is confiscation. Okay? Everywhere that's happened, you register them and you lose them. And I've taught over 2,600 students for concealed carry. You must take the responsibility to defend yourself, your family, your home, and your neighbor. Thank you. Did I miss anyone? Is there anyone else that would like to address the board or the committee with regard to this issue? Can you come up to the front? I saw two. I'm opening up. I see three. That's it. We're closing. Three. One, two. Ma'am? Yes. There was a man in the back, too. I, he just walked up here. No, there's no one. You got the. This, the gentleman in the hat. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know him. But. Can you come up here then, please? And then I'm going to close it off. Except Nancy, who I actually know you signed up for on a different issue. May I ask you to state your name and your address, please, for the record? Good morning, Pamela. Yes, my name is Mark Wood. I live in McHenry, 2601 West Ringwood. Uh, I've lived in McHenry County for over 50 years. And I wanted to say thank you for um, considering this. I hope that this passes. First of all, I would like to say thank you to everybody in this room for the civility that I, I've heard, I've listened to people, and I hope that this continues. It's a, um, to the mothers demanding action, moms demanding action, whatever the, the term is. We all feel the same goal. We all want the same ultimate goal, safety for our children. But I'm here to say guns are not our problem. I would also like to go ahead and say who is it that is in this room, not currently I guess, that has probably spent more time studying, has more reason to consider, has more at stake than nearly any of us in this room, in this county, to consider whether or not the Second Amendment is appropriate and we should be allowed to carry and have guns, would be the police officers. If there is anybody that is probably more affected by that, it would be a police officer that has to come to a home that has to protect us. They can't protect us all the time, but they are the ones that would have the most 
to say. And they are the ones that are claiming. 80 of the counties in Illinois, the sheriffs have said, we do not consider that law to be constitutional. We will not support it. There is a reason. They are the people on the front line that have to deal with this. They know that that will not protect us. If anything, they want us to be a well-regulated militia. I am the militia. And I want to say thank you for considering this. I do hope that you support this amendment, and I very much support the, the sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood. The, the next, excuse me. something to give to you. The next gentleman who's going to address the committee, please step forward. Thanks, Dennis. I'll just take that. It's a petition for over 200 people to make McHenry County a sanctuary county. It was three years ago they were signing this petition. They did not want it. State your name and your address, please, My sir. name is Mark Sparber. I live at 882 Coventry Lane in Crystal Lake. I've lived here for over 32 years. I worked for our Fortune 500 company for 34 years. The last 21, I've had a CDL license, Class A. The reason why I'm telling you this is for a reason. I, I've been certified to drive all kinds of tra trailers, 53 foot, 48 foot, 45, double trailers, triple trailers. I've got an interstate certification to travel every road in this county state in the United States. All these regulations that I've had is because there's been a lot of issues with truck drivers killing people on the roads. A real good friend of mine's twin was killed by a semi-driver. But having all these regulations has put a big toll on all of the truck drivers and regulations are very important. I, am, I had to have <laughs> random drug testing all the time. I just come into work. If I refuse to take the test, I get fired immediately. And I have to take special classes for six weeks. And after six weeks, they can decide whether they want to bring me back. And then I have more random drug testing. Five, six, seven times a month if I do that. The reason why I'm telling you about this, uh, so I, there's some other things. I had a DOT physical every two years. If I don't pass, I have high blood pressure, diabetes. They can only give me a three-month extension. We all have rules. We have to take care of things in our life. And that's why it's important. Of course, I lost my track because I was just talking. I guess I'll skip the rest of this part. But the reason why I'm up here is because I decided late last night to talk about this. So I didn't really prepare properly. But I did some research at 10 PM. And as of the end of yesterday, January 30th, there's been 39 mass shootings in this country. There's been 96 people killed, 223 Jeez. injured. In fact, the last two yesterday, maybe you didn't even hear about them, in Dallas, Texas, and Lakeland, Florida. Because it's becoming the norm. Like, it's no big deal anymore. And that's horrifying to me. I got this information from the Gun Violence Archives. Nobody needs a military style weapon. People say this is about taking your guns away. It's not. The only people who should have military guns are the military and the police that protect us. No citizen needs it because it's a horrible weapon. It destroys people. It shatters bones. It decapitates people. I was hoping it's disgusting to talk about that a mother, like from maybe Uvalde, Texas, would have had an open casket, like a McTill's mother, to show the people what that gun does. We don't need it. Bring your comments to a close, please. OK. Uh, I just hope, uh, I'll really summarize quickly. I hope that the county decides not to make this a sanctuary county. But who knows, with all my regulations, maybe I should get rid of all my regulations, and then I can petition this board to make us a CDL-free county so I can come back to work and I can take all kinds of drugs and take uppers and not sleep and drive around the county and kill people. Do the same thing. Thank you. 
Next individual, please. Hello. Hi, I'm Kathy Johnson. Uh, <coughs> I'll, honestly, I'll be very quick because I know you guys are really tired at Kathy this point. Kathy Johnson of where? Oh, I'm sorry. That's 8610 right. South Hill Road, Marengo. Thank um, you. I've lived there for 37 years. I'm a retired teacher, so I have, um, and I retired from Elgin. I have lots of experience along those lines. And, um, and I've been pretty much of an activist, and so I kind of keep an eye on things and what's going on. But I want um, just a couple of points real quick, all right, because I, and most of the things that, that I want to talk about have already been covered, and you don't need it again. But the things that, that really um, make, I really feel important, that, that are important, is um, that we need to, how difficult it is right now to go to, to physically go to an event, a, a big event, even one like this, although this we know nobody can get in with a, a, a weapon. But just to go to a basketball game or just to go anywhere, it's incredibly, I, I don't know about you, but I walk in, I look around, I know where the doors are, I know where I would go if somebody started. I mean, you look and you try and figure it out. It is very hard, and I'm sorry, we need to do something about it. There are, we've talked, there were many ideas of things to do, but that's one of my concerns. Um, I know how difficult, no, unfortunately, I don't know how difficult it is for a teacher because I retired just as they were starting to have lockdowns. Um, my last year was actually 9-11, so that, that was an incredible lockdown at the time, but, but um, I don't know how those teachers or how those students get through that. Those, 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 um, I, I don't, it's horrible to have to think about a child having to hide in a closet and to stay quiet. For two minutes. Okay. Oh, really? Jeez. All right, I was going to be really fast. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, um, HB uh, 5471, um, we need to let it go to courts. I am um, go through the courts, and I do not um, want this resolution. That's how I, um, it, it is not good for our county in any way, shape, or form. And I do expect our sheriff, who, sp who took an oath of office, to enforce the law as he should. And so, um, um, and that is actually where I'm at. So. Thank you very much. I wasn't quite as fast as I was hoping, but anyway. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Hi, my name is Tyler Duncan. I'm here on behalf of Second Amendment Sports, a lawful business at 3705 West Elm in McHenry. According to State Rep Morgan, House Speaker Welch, Senator President Harmon, and our Governor, J.B. Pritzker, who actually is getting ready to open a range 10 miles over the border, HB 5471, also known as Illinois Assault Weapon Ban, was a good start, or a step in the right direction. I said a start. They are not done. They will continue to pass unconstitutional laws, and that's why we need this body to step up and declare McHenry County a sanctuary county. <clears throat> the law was passed despite public opposition via witness slips being in an excess of four times more opposing than proponents but they did not listen to us. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Activist groups such as Moms Demand Action, the Brady Group, Every Town for Gun Safety, Giffords, and many others are the true authors of this bill. That's admitted by our legislators. They sat down and were the ones that mediated the House and the Senate's bill to come together to make the final bill. This was not for the people by the people. <laughs> This bill was passed with two goals in mind. One, to put federally lawful, federal and state licensed businesses, just kill them, put them out of business. Two, to deprive citizens of their right to keep and bear arms that are clearly in lawful common use. That's according to state Supreme Court presidents. That is 200,000, Caetano versus Connecticut, 200,000. While our lawyers are sure that we will prevail in our litigation in the long run, that should not stop this board from protecting the citizens, the taxpayers' rights to 
keep and bear arms. So I ask this committee, Two minutes. The, next, the next full board meeting, to bring a resolution to make McHenry County a sanctuary county. Thank you for your time. Morning, my name is Norm Siegel. I live here in Woodstock now. I came from basically a city, moved out here in 2006 when I started playing music out here and I've been living here since 2017. I feel safe out here. I feel real, real safe out here until I found out that Sheriff Tatelman does not want to support the law. He's not, he is not going to act upon his oath that's wrong. That's totally wrong. You might disagree with the law, but nonetheless, the law is the law, and there is nobody above the law, which includes elected officials, normal people, and people with guns. I don't, I do not want to curtail the Second Amendment. It's not right. We do have that right, but we have a, a militia of our own. It's called the National Guard Reserve. What do you need an arsenal in your home for? You're going to go out and shoot a rabbit with an AR-15 AR and pull off 30 shots in one 12 foot? No, you don't need it. Do you need a, a, a semi-automatic handgun to protect your home? I'll give you that. It's the long rifles, the assault rifles, the semi-automatic rifles that are killers and in the hands of stupid, ignorant people, we are not safe. We don't know who's got one out here. I don't really care. But to be very honest with you, half the population of the United States of America does. Thank you. Nancy, would you like to come forward and make your public uh, I'm sorry. Nancy was wondering why would she just speak during the legislative session? Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. absolutely. That, right. that would be much more called for. Okay. All right, um, public comment is officially closed. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is member comments. Do any members or any, and please note for the record that John Reiner has joined us and joined us about an hour ago um, during the comment, public comment. But are there any members of the committee that have any comments that they would like to make this morning? Matt? Matt Kunkel? Good, sir. The floor is yours. Um, obviously, people here, have, um, we have disagreements. Not all of us can agree on this whole matter. One thing I do hear over and over, and I have the emails to prove it, is do your job. I'm sure our sheriff has those same emails, do your job. I believe we are doing our job defending the Constitution as well, I understand it, as it is written right now. I do not believe our governor did his job with HB 5471. 5471 ended up being a shell bill. It means they just kind of ran that thing through. Our governor, better than anyone, knows that he can make all the change he needs with guns through the Illinois State Constitution. And then by that Constitution, this board would be obligated to stand behind that. But he chose to go this route. He also chose to open, his family, the Pritzker family, chose to open a gun range and retail gun center not 30 minutes from here. I'm a first time politician. First time I've run for anything. But what I have seen in many, many years is every time the squabbling starts, every time we're dancing like marionettes on both the left and right side, politicians make money on this thing. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with the fact that there was a legitimate, a rightful way for them in Springfield to do their job. They chose not to do their job right. I applaud our sheriff because in the end, like this board, all we have left is our oath to the Constitution of this state, our oath to the Constitution of the United States, and protect McHenry County as best we can 
with those constitutional rights and that oath in place. Sheriff Tatelman's doing it that way. I believe this board has an obligation to do it that way also. That's my comment. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. You know what? I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be really kind. I bet the rules and allowed everyone in this room, even though you didn't follow the rules and sign up, I let you speak. I asked very kindly on several occasions for you to hold your personal comments to yourselves. I'm going to ask for the last time. It's rude. We all have different opinions. Respect them. And just keep your applause and your boos to yourself. You need to respect the people as well, Master. I am. I let you speak, sir. Oh, no, no. Yeah. You let. You let. Seriously. You let. Are there any more member comments? Going, uh, uh, Mr. Hendricks, please. Just some brief comments. Sure. Uh, so obviously, a lot of the individuals here today are uh, spoke on resolution. Sorry. 50. Yeah, I apologize. I'll speak louder. So a lot of the microphone in here. A lot of the. Uh, Public comments were obviously regarding the resolution against HB 5471. Uh, I did some brief research, and I just want to address some of the uh, some of the comments that I heard. You know, New Hampshire. I, this is from Every Town for Gun Safety. Uh, I just looked to see, you know, what do like the the, the groups that support gun control uh, say about the laws, right? And you know, New Hampshire is ranked number 39 in terms of the amount of gun laws that they have, uh, being that they don't have that many. Uh, you know, they, they were listed as better than average in terms of the gun violence rate. You know, same thing with Vermont. They were, got every time for gun safety said they had weak laws. Uh, and yet, uh, as far as their gun violence, the, there really wasn't any. Uh, in fact, I think they have under 10 uh, homicides a year, and two or three of those are by done via guns. Uh, Illinois, before this law passed, had the seventh strongest laws, according to every town for gun, uh, gun safety. Uh, and yet, we have above ha average uh, crime, we have above average uh, gun violence crime. It, they, it doesn't work. People who are going to be uh, committing crime, uh, especially some of the more heinous crimes, like these mass shootings that we talked about, they're not going to care if it's done with some sort of tool that is otherwise banned. They don't care. They're, they're going to shoot up a, a, a parade. Do you think he, I don't think that they care that it's illegal. I just don't. Um, you know, we look at ProPublica, you know, said that the federal assault weapons ban mm -hmm. had, there was no correlation in it reducing any sort of gun violence whatsoever. You have 538 researchers who have specifically found, and I believe they wrote this in a, Leah Labrowski wrote a, an opinion piece in the Washington Post in 2017 saying, uh, the most effective uh, or the best outcome for gun laws are ones that are narrowly tailored, uh, narrowly tailored to prevent uh, or to essentially protect subsets of victims. Uh, that's not what this does. What this law does is it bans semi-automatic rifles, arguably all semi-automatic rifles under the definition, uh, from being owned, sold, possessed, unless you report it, register. Uh, you can't. You had to have owned it beforehand. We, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, it, it won't achieve anything. Uh, it bans common, the, some of the most common firearms in America. It bans them not only from being carried in public. I, I, I know there was one comment about you know how would you feel if if I had a firearm firearm on me right now. I, I personally wouldn't care. Uh, because I don't think my, I don't look at my fellow citizens as someone intent on doing me harm. Hmm. If if you want to, but I mean by all means, don't don't try not to break the law. But I'm not going to be calling the, I'm not going to be calling Sheriff Tatelman on you guys. Uh, and it's because I I have a sense of respect uh, for my average fellow citizen, and you know until shown otherwise. You point a gun at me, maybe we'll be talking uh, differently, but. 
the, the mere possession uh, or having it, it, it poses no threat to me. I'm not concerned about that, frankly. Um, and then I'll just wrap it up very briefly. I, I heard some people talk about, you know, how high our gun violence crime is, and, and obviously anywhere uh, that something is, you know, more commonly held, uh, there's going to be higher rates of it. Uh, whether that's there's more DUIs in cities because there's more people who drive cars in cities, right? Uh, but if you actually, if you just stop looking at the subset of gun violence and you just look at violent crime generally, we do have half the violent crime rate of England, right? We might, you know, they, they have significantly higher burglaries. They, they have higher instances of sexual assault. Uh, so I don't think America is a particularly uh, dangerous country to live in. And it, frankly, if you don't include some of the major, or if you just don't include major urban populations, which is where the vast majority of crime period occurs, uh, we have basically right on par uh, violent crime rate with uh, the rest of Europe, including gun violence uh, crime rate. Uh, so I just, I, I just don't see what this law achieves, other than frankly making criminals out of our fellow neighbors, citizens, putting people out of jobs, destroying businesses. It's it's something that you know I certainly support the resolution against the HB fifty four seventy one. And then, very, very briefly, I heard comments about, you know, you know the Second Amendment protects well-regulated militias. Well, you know, for everybody who's saying we should just let the courts, you know, play it out, it's already been played out. Well-regulated, you know, in Heller v. DC, or DC v. Heller, uh, well-regulated just means well-tricked. That's what that means, right? Definitions change over time. At the time it was written, it just meant a well trained militia. And if you read the Federalist Papers, I think someone mentioned James Madison, ironically. Uh, militia means, uh, I think it's Federalist Paper 49. James Madison says, you know, who is the militia? Might have been Ham Alexander Hamilton, but either way, they discuss who the militia is. It's just the everyday citizen. George Mason has said that basically there was no debate on this issue. Everyone understood, all the founding fathers understood that militia meant everybody basically, uh, and uh, well-regulated just meant to be well-trained. And as far as some of the other things, like switches uh, turning a weapon into a fully automatic weapon, there's already been a ban against fully automatic weapons. There's been a ban federally since 1986, at least. There's been a ban in Illinois. Uh, as far as I'm aware of, I could only find it going back to 1999. These have been bans that have already been out there uh, for decades and decades and decades. Uh, so, you know, as far as, you know, a switch making a weapon fully automatic, with or without this law, it's still illegal in Illinois, it's still illegal federally. Uh, so as far as, you know, there's, there's other portions of the law, you know, I can respect that, but also uh, they don't actually change the status quo on any of them. And that's all I have to say about that. And I'm going to assume we're going to pull this off the consent agenda, so there'll be <laughs> ample time to, to have further discussion. Um, any other member comments at this time? Anyone? Yes, please. Um, owning a gun does not keep you safe. Um, the facts um, are quite to the contrary. In reality, having access to a gun triples a person's risk of suicide and nearly doubles the risk of being a homicide victim. For a woman living with an abusive partner, the risk of being murdered increases fivefold if the partner has a gun. And this was, these results came from a study that was conducted by Jacqueline Campbell, PhD, MSN, a faculty member of the John Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Prevention and Policy at the Bloomberg School. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, any anything else? Moving on to the next item on the agenda is new business. There really is no new business today. Um, 
5.1 is really a placeholder and other is just, again, an opportunity to bring any items forward. Otherwise, we have nothing. Moving on to the routine consent agenda, does anyone have any item they'd like to remove from the consent agenda? Ms. Wagner? Uh, 61, 62, 65, and 66, please. Anyone else? Do I have a motion then to approve 6.3, 6.4, and 6.7 as presented on the routine agenda? Mr. Kunkel, seconded by Mr. Hendricks. Kathy, can we do a roll call vote, please? Wagner. Yes. Kunkel. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Campbell. Yes. Shorten. Yes. Alcoff. Yes. Thank you. 6.1, which is the resolution opposing HB 5471. Um, with uh, respect, uh, Ms. Wigner, might I yield the floor to Mr. Hendricks? This resolution was authored by um, Mr. Hendricks. Um, I'd like to give you an opportunity to kind of present what you were thinking and answer any specific questions from the board members um, as, as the author of that resolution, if that's okay with you. Well, that's fine. So, Ms. Wagner? Has everyone had an opportunity to read 6.1? I guess I would first start with uh, HB 5471, and I'll try not to reiterate what I said during that very comments. And may, may I interject too? Um, everyone should be aware that Mr. Hendricks, um, with Mr. Austin, Chairman Buellers, and myself, we did run this by the state's attorney. He has reviewed this and he's made some suggestions to Mr. Hendricks. Um, for your consideration, so uh, just not to me, but, yeah. oh well, he made some recommendations, um, which ultimately we can share with the full committee. But I did want you to know he did review it. Thank you. Yep. So HB fifty four seventy one. Uh, essentially, I've, I've read the bill uh, as amended and passed. Uh, it does outlaw semi-automatic weapons in general, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it certainly by name identifies specific uh, weapons uh, that are banned as well as criteria for determining whether a weapon is an assault weapon. And that really is, I think, a, a, a it's misleading, right? Because I, I don't understand, and if another member could explain to me, I don't know what makes a semi-automatic assault weapon any different than a semi-automatic, say, rifle in general. I, I don't understand the point of it. It criminalizes the use inside the home, criminalizes the possession inside the home. It prevents people from being able to sell things that they uh, owned beforehand. Uh, and frankly, I think it violates all sorts of constitutional rights. Uh, obviously, the Second Amendment, but you know, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment violates provisions of the Illinois uh, Constitution uh, in terms of how it was passed. And so I, I mean, this is this is egregious. If if you wanted to argue, hey, we're not going to let AR-15s be carried on by someone openly, you know, in the public or at sports stadiums, uh, that that would be you know fine. Like, you know, we can debate that kind those kind of stuff. Uh, but as far as just outright banning the use or possession of a firearm in general, it, it, it seems egregious. I, I don't understand what it achieves. It, it, it certainly, there's no study I'm aware of that shows um, possession of weapons or firearms uh, increases anything, with the exception uh, to what Gloria pointed out, which is uh, suicide risk. There is a statistical correlation there. But if we're gonna talk about suicide, I don't understand I don't think people who are committing suicide with firearms, uh, one, are typically presenting a threat to someone other than themselves. And while it's horrific, I don't know if that choice uh, justifies a constitu constitutional violation of everybody else. And frankly, I don't understand why uh, either magazine uh, capacity limits uh, or certain weapons matter in that case. Uh, it's it's not going to do anything if you're, there's, there's you can commit suicide with any firearm, uh, and it's just one shot. So I, I don't understand uh, the benefit. I 
I'd love to hear from you, anyone who disagrees what the benefit would be uh, because all the research I've looked at, you know, all the evaluation, I've, I've chose, <coughs> I chose pro-gun control sources for a lot of the stuff I looked up. You know, it, it doesn't really tie in. Uh, so if you have any questions, by all means, let me know what those questions are. And, and if you can differentiate why, you know, any of the supposed assault weapons are particularly harmful uh, versus any other firearm out there. Firearms are deadly. I don't know if anyone can test that. That's, that's what they're used for. They're used to protect yourself uh, with lethal force. They're used to hunt animals and, and, and kill the animal. They're used for all sorts of things. They're used to, for sporting events, right? Just sports shooting. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand where, why the distinction was made that these particular weapons were particularly egregious. And I guess I would just open the floor to debate and discussion. And, and I want to provide the fact that the state's attorney did make recommendations for some amendments. Um, I too had some comments. Um, and if this resolution fails, it still goes before the full county board. It just goes under new and unfinished business. So the resolution will be considered by the full county board. Do I understand that correct, Peter? I'm saying that correctly? So just so you understand and so everyone in the audience understands that regardless of the recommendation of this committee, the resolution does appear before the full county board at our next meeting. I already can indicate that I intend to offer some amendments. So, having said that, Ms. Wagner, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think most people know where I stand on this resolution. Um, <clears throat> but looking at the resolution itself, I think it's obvious that it creates confusion by listening to so many different people and their opinions in this room. It creates confusion. Um, <coughs> well, it doesn't matter what your opinion is on if you like the Second Amendment, if you don't, if you un own guns, you don't. There is confusion just within this room on what the resolution means, what the powers the sheriff has, and where we will go forward. So I, so, so also, as pointed out by some of the speakers, this resolution that's presented ha does have some inflammatory language, and I don't think that's appropriate that we need inflammatory language in the resolution. It, it's one thing to say, that we disagree, and we have done this before. We have disagreed with uh, laws that have been passed by Springfield, but we don't need inflammatory language. Um, <clears throat> also, I don't think the county board should be in the business of doing what a political party tells us to do. We were writ read out loud by one of the, the, in the public comments, the resolution that was provided by a political party and I don't think we as a board, if we want to work together, should be doing what a political party tells us what to do. It doesn't matter which political party. And the fact that two of the whereases in this resolution as presented come straight from that resolution from the political party, is that the way our county board should be run? No, we need to be independent thinkers and we need to think how we feel about this, not how the political party. We need to think about what all of the constituents want as a whole, not a certain subset of our of our constituents. So I think this resolution is actually taking time away from our committee and our county board to do the things that we should be doing, discuss the things that we should be doing in our county. So I actually am going to move that we table this resolution until the courts have made their decisions. Is there a second to that motion? Well, we might as well vote on it, I guess. Seconded by Carolyn Campbell. Yes. Yeah. Can you take a roll call vote, please? Conkle. What are we voting on? You're voting on to table the resolution until the courts make a decision as to the constitutionality of HB 50. No, you're not here to table the resolution. Campbell? Yes. Hendricks? No, to table. Wagner? Yes. Shorten? No. 
All talk. No. So the discussion continues. Ms. Wagner, do you have anything else? Um, I guess I, I have a few things on the whereas is. Please. Um, so if you're looking at some of the, the last two portions of the resolution, be it further resolved, it says that they would like an additional budget line item. So I assume that would be to track the expenses that would be used to enforce the law. Uh, I was told by the sheriff's office a couple years ago that expenses couldn't be broken out according to even the ICE contract. So I'm wondering if this can even, if we put this in the resolution, is it even attainable? Peter, Mr. Sheriff, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I was going to Rob. Um, just a moment. May, am I putting you on the spot or might I ask you to iterate the recommendations from the state's attorney's office or is there somebody from the state's attorney's office here that maybe could ad address those recommendations or suggestions that he made via email to us? Well, I did talk with, with State's Attorney Kennelly and, uh, Please. and uh, about those those last two, be it for the resolves. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Norm, you help me on this, but I mean, I, I think the second to last one on, on the budget line is awkward. That's not really how our budget operates. Um, it, it is a statement, but I, I think it is a little bit removed from how we operate financially. Uh, the, the last, be it for the resolve, I think is bit of an encroachment on the autonomy of, of the countywide elected official. Uh, and, and those were, were my thoughts initially, but, but Patrick reinforced them uh, and, and in fact brought them up before I raised them. So, yeah, in fact, uh, yeah. am I reflecting yeah. your state's attorney's position? Yeah. And, and with, with respect to, I, do, I don't believe that um, Mr. Hendricks received those those comments, so I don't know if you were aware that those were I, recommendations. I didn't, I didn't speak. Uh, just not to speak. Okay. Okay. So do we strike him? I'm sorry. So, so, yeah, so what is the I, 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 I can't answer that, the author. I would tell you that, um, I, you know, I intended to draft an amendment to this resolution and that they wouldn't be included in a suggestion I made, but I can't speak for Mr. Hendricks. I, I would be... I guess amenable to removing the budget line item. I'm not trying to create extra work or make the budgeting process awkward. I, I would like uh, the be it further resolved that no McHenry County uh, funds be appropriated towards the state's attorney's office nor the McHenry County Sheriff's Office towards the enforcement of HB 5471. So in response to that, if this is passed, if, if the sheriff has to do what he is lawfully supposed to do, that will actually hurt the sheriff's department because they, basically you're talking about defunding the police. They will have to do their, well, it, there, it would be. It would taking, be taking away money or not giving the, the sheriff money for the things that they're, the duties that they're supposed to uphold. So if this resolution does pass, I think there needs to be money appropriated to it to make sure that they can do their job adequately. Per, per, if I, sure. Mr. Hendricks? Per, respectfully, I don't think that's defunding the police. Uh, not appropriating money, additional money to be used towards something is certainly not equivalent to, take, to defunding or taking away money. Uh, there's currently no money spent by the county board uh, on this law, and I would just like there's some there to be a provision within the resolution saying that you know we'll fund the sheriff's department you know we support the sheriff uh, we support the sheriff's position or at least I do um, uh, that he won't be enforcing this uh, specific bill because he does not find it well I won't I won't put words in the sheriff's mouth but essentially uh, I don't even know if the sheriff uh, would consider uh, not appropriating additional monies uh, to be equivalent of defunding the sheriff's department. Can I get clarification? So the state's attorney's office is saying that these last two further resolved. They were recommending. I think that's what I said. They well, were, said he me, said. Let me. He recommended. I'm sorry. Well, they're 
So what is being said is that the state's attorney is recommending, and Norm, if you'd like to speak. There were versions of these that were included in the resolution that we reviewed. And I will tell you, we have concerns with them, but it is not the state's attorney's office to make the policy that the county board makes. The one concern that that we have, especially over the last be it resolved, is if this law is found constitutional, this resolution says that no funds will be expended. Now, I have no idea what funds would be expended to enforce it at this point anyway. It's completely unknown. Well, let's say that there are specific funds that are required. The Sheriff's Department has to amp up. The State Attorney's Office has to amp up on this. But you're saying you won't fund us. And that could lead to a situation where there's a conflict between the board and the Sheriff's Office and our office. There's no clause in here that says that if it's found constitutional, then the funding provisions aren't valid or aren't enforceable. Please, Mr. Short, continue on the line. Uh, have any other resolutions or whatnot that have specified that we're going to fund or not fund <coughs> enforcement of particular laws? You know, I had some of that discussion uh, over the weekend, <laughs> uh, and I think the short answer is no. There are uh, occasionally there are there are dollars grant programs that target specific offenses, seat belts, drunk driving, some of those. Those were the only things I could example, or the only examples that I can think of, and, and I, you know, Sheriff, please correct me, but of, of dollars that are going to specific programs. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the Sheriff's Office and the State's Attorney have broad discretion, once dollars are appropriate, how they're going to enforce laws and, and, and where those priorities are going to go. Uh, and so, and that's not to take away from what this resolution is trying to do. I just, I don't, I don't think that either of those last two be it there for resolves. But, you know, I think there's some challenges there. I don't think they, they had a lot, and I think that was, that was Patrick's analysis. Okay, well, I'd be more comfortable. We didn't have them included in the resolution because I don't th I think that that could be a potential problem. Um, so that would be my opinion. Any other comments or questions? Please. So I feel that Joyce our county Hansish. board uh, has a, a duty to be clear to our citizens what it is that we're doing and we're not doing, and that we are serving all of the needs of, of our residents. Uh, we've had a lot of public comment today and previous days over this, and um, I don't know if I want to take the time to go through every whereas, but I do have a comment for every whereas. Um, one of the, I guess the most pointed thing here I have is that when I read the, the, sh the statement shared by the Sheriff's Association that was uh, posted on our Sheriff's webpage, I read it and I thought to myself, I, I would not write that, I would not write that statement. But I understand where the statement's coming from, I respect our sheriff's uh, expertise on this, and I felt that it was far more measured than this resolution. I feel this resolution uh, is doing two things. Well, doing a couple of things, but one of the things is it's, it's trying to placate the members of our community who are saying that this is like a, a infringement on their rights, and they're willing to fight a war over this. Now, today nobody said that, and I appreciate that, but in a previous in a previous meeting, when the comment was there was no war, a, a member comments, a, a public comment came out, yes, there is. If they're fighting a war, who, who, are, who are they fighting? Are they going to take up guns against the members of the, commu the community who are opposed to them having specific weapons? Are they taking weapons up against their elected leaders? Or are they taking, or are they taking guns up against the enforcement agencies? I don't want to be placating those people or inciting them. So if, they, if people are going to be brought to think that, that uh, this gives them even more cause to take up a battle that we don't need to have, um, that's, what, that's a concern. Another thing that it does is it uh, creates an awful lot of anxiety for members of our community who are concerned about the proliferation of weapons throughout the, throughout the, the country. Uh, I, 
I think that most people are concerned about the safety of public spaces. And some people think the answer is that they can conceal carry and they're going to be a good guy with a gun. Some people are concerned that the good guy with the guns sometimes become the bad guy with the gun. Um, we haven't had a situation like that here, but we, it was not too long ago that there was an issue in Wisconsin where there was a good guy with a gun shooting uh, protesters. And it turned out that wasn't, he's not a good guy, but he certainly thought he was, right? Uh, we don't want that. We don't, nobody wants that. You're, you're, you're now addressing the committee. Continue, continue to address the committee, so, please. Um, this resolution makes people who are worried about gun proliferation even more worried. So it's not creating a calming nation, um, a calming notion to our community. And there are other people in the middle of both spectrums, the ones that are very concerned about their rights being infringed and those who are very concerned about uh, the safety in the public spaces. Uh, who, who, are to, who will eventually, not right now, looking at it, thinking, what does this say about our community? Uh, one of our big things we want is we want more tourism to the county. Uh, tourism, majority of the people, the, the, the masses of people are coming from uh, urban areas. Urban areas don't want a fear of, of guns being in the public spaces. So we've said this law is not supposed to target us, but instead target Chicago. We want Chicagoans <coughs> to come out here and recreate as well. And I think that's I think that that this this resolution, uh, in the words of of uh, one of the regards, negatively impacts the businesses of our county when we are. Um, scaring away certain people from wanting to be tourists in our community. Well, I'll leave it at that. I have more, but, no, no, but I, and, and yes. I, I don't want to be rude, but I, I really want to allow everybody who's not on the committee to have a comment if you have such, but I also want to give deference to the people who actually are on the committee. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Shorten, did you have a comment or a question? Um, yeah, I, I have a comment. I have a couple comments. Um, it, when this law was uh, signed, uh, Public Act 102-1116, uh, I believe the governor made the statement that um, we're, we're making an effort, or, or we're successfully taking weapons of war or military style <coughs> weapons off the street. The fact is that um, HB 5471 doesn't take the weapons of war and military style weapons off the street. It just reserves the right to own them to the people that already own them, provided that they register them. Um, the people that don't own them, that we all have the Second Amendment right. It's not reserved to gun owners, it's everyone. So you're saying uh, by signing this act and making that statement that the people that have them are the only ones that have the right to protect themselves. Now, with limited magazines, you have to take your magazines and turn them in. It creates a registration for the people that own the guns, something that has been um, uh, addressed by the Supreme Court in uh, various decisions. Um, it's, it's not legal. Now, there are parts of this bill that I would agree with. Uh, I don't think that we should have automatic weapons um, available to the citizenry. Um, the fact is that the uh, uh, semi-automatic rifles are widely in circulation. A lot of people own them, and frankly, the, the, the bad guys that would commit crimes are not going to hesitate to find a source to get those. So uh, essentially what we're saying is, uh, the law-abiding citizens, people like me who owned a FOID card for 10 years before I ever bought a gun because I wanted the right to exercise my Second Amendment right if I felt I needed to. Um, I followed the rules. I followed the regulation. I continue to follow the rules and follow the regulation. Um, what I see with 5471 is it's a, uh, and I believe uh, it was Mr. Duncan spoke, it's a, it's a squeeze on um, Second Amendment rights. It's a squeeze on, um, frankly, safe gun ownership. Uh, I took some time this week and I went to a, a local range in my district. Um, and uh, one of the things that I've learned in the past couple of years as a gun owner, um, and this is the first time that I, I shot my guns, uh, I, have, I have my friend John. And Johnny's, uh, I think he's a 65, you won't mind that I tell you how old he is. John's, John's kind of a fun guy, kind of a goof. And uh, uh, after I obtained my, my first firearms, um, I called him up and said, hey, John, when are we going to go shooting? 
And he said, well, I'm going to go tomorrow. My son's place, he's got a bunch of acreage behind him, and uh, we can go shoot your guns there. I said, all right, cool. I pulled in the driveway, and there were about 20 cars there. And I looked at my friend John, and I said, John, what's going on? He said, oh, it's my son's birthday. I said, what do you mean? Well, it's my son's birthday. For his birthday, he has all his friends come over with their guns, and they have a range at the back, and they shoot. I said, all right. And as I said, John's kind of a goof. I got up there, and John, uh, who's, who's a, a practices his Second Amendment right, is a safe gun owner, the switch flipped. And he said, do this, don't do this, make sure you're doing this. He was on top of me. Um, when you go to the, the gun ranges uh, in the county, um, I know at least with on target, I'm sure the others do it too, there is an agreement you have to sign, a list of rules that you have to read before you walk in there. They have uh, uh, folks there that are there watching you and how you're training with your, training with your guns. These rangers also provide education for people that own guns. So um, what, this, what this law has the potential to do is it, is it takes a, a, a portion of gun ownership in the uh, semi-automatic rifles and says, okay, we can no longer sell those guns, we can no longer uh, sell the magazines, and I believe the ammunition, a lot of it, is off limits as well. So it affects the business model of those gun ranges. Those gun ranges, as I said, offer education. I took a look at a calendar of on target for the next month, and there's, I think about, uh, I'm estimating between 15 and 20 different classes and events where citizens can come and practice with their gun, make sure they understand the efficiency, learn about safety, take concealed carry classes, know when they can and cannot carry, when they carry, um, the rules that they have to follow. So what this bill does is it takes, uh, uh, impedes on the Second Amendment right, um, frankly uh, has the potential to make uh, law-abiding gun owners less safe in the operation and function of their weapon. And it frankly gives bad people, criminals who would do bad things, and, and frankly, a lot of the gun crime takes place in the big city, cities, in the metropolitan areas. I spent a lot of time on the CDC website looking through causes of gun deaths and where they occur. It's in the cities where there's a broader social problem that's not being addressed. Hasn't been addressed. We've known about it for a long time. So uh, we can talk about the, some of the language that's in this resolution, and I'm amenable to making changes. I, I think Mr. Hendricks has expressed that he uses well. Um, so I think if, if we want to make changes to it, let's talk about those changes and then put forth a resolution to the board to vote on that I, I think will pass. And, and I'll just note um, for clarification too that this resolution, and this is absolutely with no disrespect or comment on anything, um, Mr. Hendricks and I have had text conversations. Um, I think that the tenor of this resolution is substantially different than previous resolutions that this county board has taken up, and, and that was my concern. Um, I'm a big believer that it's best to address other legislators with the same respect that we have for each other, and we should do so with a factual representation similar to what was done with the Safety Act. So that, that is my, my concern. I believe that there are provisions in uh, the public act now that are unconstitutional. I support our state's attorney's efforts in questioning all of those provisions, and I certainly think that we need to better enumerate those provisions in any resolution that we would pass. I also wanted to ask, too, specifically for clarification, none, none of our state elected representatives from McHenry County asked for us to do a resolution. Has anybody received any requests specifically from any of them? Craig Wilcox. Craig Wilcox. Yeah, Craig Wilcox. He, he specifically. Craig Wilcox has signed on, signed on to a statement from the Republican Party saying, oh, yeah. as a precinct person, that he But he individually, I, I understand his signature was on a petition. But he did not individually ask as our state senator, the county board, or a member of the county board to pass a resolution. And I only ask again, background, mm -hmm. When I had a piece of legislation that I specifically was introducing into the legislation, I often came before the county board and asked for support. So I'm just asking for clarification because I've gotten that question. 
if any of our elected officials at the state level have asked for us to either take a position one way or another on the legislation. This is something that's being initiated by the county board, correct? Okay. That's all. Mr. Did, Mr. Hendricks, did you have another comment? I'm watching, not, facial, not yet, I, I'm no. watching your facial expressions. Um, Ms. Yeah, Kim, so I really haven't, I guess I haven't really weighed in on, in on this at all, but um, so I understand the concerns about the law. Eric and I have had a, 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 a conversation um, about this as well. Um, and not being a gun owner, um, I don't understand the different types of weapons that are out there, what cartridge does what to what item, and when you cross that line between being legal and illegal as defined by this law. So just a couple of things. Um, and, I, and I'm sure that, because I heard a comment when I, um, I, um, I feel like when I, out of respect for my colleague who wanted to make a motion, I respect the opportunity for all of us to weigh in on that motion. Um, I do believe that this, some form of resolution will go forward. Um, I do hope that we do address the tenor that, we're, that, that we are talking about in each of these because I do think that there are, there are inflammatory comments in here and I think that we can um, express our concerns over a law that may in, involve on aspects that are unconstitutional. Here's where I have, um, so just so everyone understands, I firmly believe that gun ownership is a fundamental right, is a long established, well established principle in this country and that I actually support that. We have been said many, multiple times that we as county board members and elected officials have taken an oath. Somebody actually read that oath. Um, I don't, so I don't need to read it again. Um, I would point out that really, the thing that's uncomfortable for me as an elected official in this particular situation is people keep saying we have, we, it's, it's our moral duty or it's our, we, we took a constitutional oath to support the con Constitution. It doesn't really describe what that means per se or specifically. What it means is to uphold the laws of the land. It doesn't really give us the authority to determine constitutionality of any law. And so while we might have individuals who, with their experience with guns and their expertise with the law, being a lawyer, who might have their professional opinions about where this um, law is headed, as an elected official, I don't have that, but not only do I, I don't have, the, I have that background, but I don't have the authority to determine if this law is constitutional or not. Um, the, the, the Constitution does lay out the different branches of government. So the legislature creates the laws, uh, the executive um, executes them, the judicial branch determines constitutionality. So um, we do have our state's attorney that has, um, I had it here, I'm sorry, just one second. Our, st our state's attorney uh, was elected by county residents to represent them, has determined using his experience and expertise with, with regards to the law that this bill should be challenged on constitutional grounds. That is his purview. I believe as elected officials, it's not our purview to determine whether or not something is constitutional. I understand that there are provisions in this bill that are questionable, and I have no problem with efforts made to figure out what, should, what is right and what is wrong within that bill. Um, we do have a, you know, a situation where we talk about the, um, What's it say? Well-regulated militia um, the, to keep and bear arms. So I think <coughs> definitions have been changed over time. Interpretations of the law have changed over time in terms of what those arms mean, right? And and when the law was made in terms of the arms that were available is different than what they are today. And so all I would ask is that we we allow the process to take place. If we want to weigh in and ask the legislature or the um, the judicial branch to weigh in on the constitutionality, that's fine with me. But I think that in terms of what that definition means, I guess I don't feel comfortable being the one that makes that definition about what arms are constitutional or not. So um, anyway, I would hope that we can work further on the uh, language within this bill. Board Member Kunkel. Um, when the Constitution was drafted, <clears throat> It was supposed to be written and designed so that a common man, individual, could understand what that was what was written. I do agree over time, manners and things change. Our Constitution of the United States, our Constitution of the State of Illinois, that's our first two. Our third is to the good people of McHenry County. 
I've been watching this go on through all these meetings. And these people are in strife. They're stressed. There's a lot of anxiety here. So if no other duty than that, we need to craft a resolution to put some calm and some order to this. It is not the people without gun rights that are being challenged. It's the gun rights being challenged. Therefore, the resolution does need to be tipped towards gun rights resolution. But something has to be done that we are not all stressed out. It's all the same thing. Everybody's worried about their safety, whether they're defending their safety or they're worried about how we defend our safety. They are our third line after the Constitution. Not hard to figure this one out. These people are upset. I, 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 my question to you, though, is what authority does McHenry County have to reduce that strife? We, we don't have authority to reduce the strife, but they are looking for someone, their elected leaders, who have come up here. I know the people in D1 are, because I'm hearing from them. They're wanting to know. And I tell them, I tell them the honest truth. I don't have authority to change this law or do anything. I can see through the shenanigans, how they pulled it, how they get everybody worked up in this normal political realm and how this is all going. I can see that the bill was actually crafted so that lawyers can have a field day with and take this down. And I do, my, according to my reading of the Constitution, believe it to be unconstitutional. That's all my opinion. What is not my opinion is the people of my District 1 and the people of McHenry County are upset over this. If we craft a resolution, I think it has to have verbiage in that resolution that helps tell our people that we are on this as per, per their request. Ms. Wagner. Thank you. That was clear for me. Thank you. Ms. Wagner, sorry. I want to reiterate that I do support the Second Amendment. I've been to a gun range. I've shot a gun. And I've just decided that that's not an activity for me. I, I don't think, don't think we as a group want to take anybody's rights away. But Mr. Kunkel spoke about stress. I also want to talk about the stress that people came up and talked about, about going to a movie theater, going to a parade, going, I personally have, I went to a concert not that long ago, a small concert in Woodstock, and I figured, I watched where the exits were in case I needed to leave. And that is another stress that is on everyday people and our children who have to go hide during their lockdown drills. So it's not just the stress of gun owners, there's the stress of the constituents and people as a whole. So that said, I would ask that if this resolution passes, that the county itself, whether it's the county, the county board or the sheriff's office, make a clear message on what this resolution means um, we've heard the terms gun sanctuary, Second Amendment safe haven. I think we need to make sure that if, what the message we are sending to the people is the resolution that may be passed through the board is only telling the state legislature what we want them to do. It does not have any control over the sheriff's office. It doesn't have any control over the people and their guns. It's only telling the state legislature <coughs> what we want them to do with this law. Anyone have any further comment? Well, I just, I just want to add, because I do think, I mean, you're trying to represent your constituents, and I've heard from both sides, and I've spent a lot of time looking into this as well. And I've, I've, I had a whole thing here about the history and, 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 and uh, when certain <coughs> laws, um, you know, color decision, color decision, whatever. Um, but really, it's this balance between individual freedoms and, and, um, and balancing that with public safety that, so that everyone can feel comfortable with the outcome. Um, and I think that's a goal and that's something that we need to strive for, that we work together and have reasonable conversations to, to create that balance and make it work. Um, and so, the, again, so that resolution has to reflect you know, concerns about a bill that may cause um, you know, a gun owner to, uh, to, that is owning a gun that has for years has been considered <coughs> legal suddenly is, you know, now a felon or something, but also send the message to people who are concerned about these weapons that are designed just for mass destruction. And our, where's that balance? How can we balance that so we can all feel comfortable? And I would like to hope that we can continue to do that going forward. So I have a suggestion. 
I, I, you know, we, we can consider the resolution as presented, although I've heard, or at least I think I've heard, that there is an agreement for some modification and revision yep. on the resolution as it currently is. So is it my understanding, can we do something different than just approving or not approving the resolution as it's presented to us at committee and still allow something to move forward for the full board to consider? Or do we just take action on this resolution and it appears as either unfinished business or as a recommendation from the committee to pass the resolution? And then what I would suggest is in the interim between now and the board meeting is that we allow members of the committee to work on amendments to the resolution as you see it in front of you today. Did you follow that at all? No. no. 80% of it. I, okay. <laughs> I, I, I only understood 80% after I said it. But, I mean, you want to give, like, uh, a consent to move some resolution forward, understanding it would probably be on it, on a on the new and unfinished business, and it won't be on a consent agenda. It won't Co be correct. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then, and then but we're, we'll, we'll be understanding that there will be some working documents that, that will be exchanged between now and two weeks from Thursday. Do we have to, I guess my question is, do we have to make the amendments and the changes now before our vote? Or are we able to do that at the board meeting? I think if, if, you're, if your committee's vote. understanding that you're not voting on any particular language today, understanding that some form of particular language is going to show up on, uh, when we post that agenda uh, a week from Friday, uh, that there'll be language that has, at that point, You've, you've taken the lead on, on drafting or, 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 or massaged it some, with some additional language from the state's attorney's office? You, you, at some point, we're giving a little bit of leeway uh, to whether it's staff or, or a couple of appointed board members. So just for clarification, what I, I understand what you're saying. I just don't want to have a resolution placed in the packet on Friday, and that's the first time I'm seeing those changes. Because then, well, then what you're going to see is, is the one you've got in front of you. Pardon? Then what you're going to see is the but resolution that's You're talking about having committee. an opportunity to have some kind of discussion or interchange between now and then so that there, the committee members might have some idea of what is going to be in that resolution by Friday, is what I'm asking. It'd be a week. Or a week, a week whatever. From Friday. Whenever that Friday is, well, yes, you're right. It's two. It's a week from Friday. So that's all I'm asking. That's two weeks to have some kind of. So instead of this being in my mailbox, it, this is what we have here. It's whatever the suggestions are going forward, or here are some ideas, or here's how we're modifying this. And are we going to see that before that Friday, or are we I, just going to get would, it with the rest of the board? I would hope and anticipate that you get that beforehand. I, I mean, I can't guarantee an, anything. Um, I mean, but I certainly allowing for some input before then, because if something comes back and we really and there's a, you know, we have a question about it or whatever, so that we're not, because otherwise we're playing with the work that we're supposed to be getting done here. Is now I'm just going to well, that's to but them. but but again, responding, I've heard, I've heard that there's a, somewhat of a consensus to go forward. Mm -hmm. We understand that what we want to send a message. I think that we've also heard that there's some <coughs> inflammatory language. I also have heard that there's a recommendation from the state's attorney's office. I think that there's been specific direction. I heard from Matt that he wants something in the <coughs> resolution that basically indicates that we are concerned about the rights of individuals who current, are currently law-abiding <coughs> gun owners. I mean, I've, I've heard all of that. I certainly hope that, and I'm looking at Eric because I think he should be engaged in assisting moving forward in <coughs> crafting amendments to the resolution he presented. But I think we have enough information from what I've heard this morning to start putting something together. Obviously, it would never be the intent to throw it at you on the Friday before the meeting. We certainly would be sending you what, what we can. But, but again, I'm wise enough to know that six snowstorms and me being stuck in New Zealand might make it a little bit, you know, but I certainly the intent would be to keep people informed. Otherwise, what I'm saying, Carolyn, is that what I would call then for is a motion to approve the resolution as presented. If it fails, it still goes as presented to the county board in this format. 
under new and unfinished business. Otherwise, it goes, if it, if it passes as a recommendation to the board, it goes on the consent agenda. I'm looking at Peter. If it passes. If it passes, it goes on the consent agenda. You know, and the, other, the, the other piece of this is, you know, the chairman need to exercise his approval to put anything. Michael, right. uh, Mr. Uh, chairman Bueller, he's referencing, yes. Okay, so point of clarification. Mm -hmm. So if we say no, then that allows us to amend, amend it. It goes on new unfinished business. Yes. So I, I, I didn't mean that. Well, no, I mean, you're saying if we appro approve it as it's written right now, then it's done, you're not going to modify it, and it goes on the... If we, so, no. I might be able to just, if, if we vote on it as is, changes can still be made in that. Correct. Correct. It goes on the agenda even if it passes committee, agenda, it goes under the consent. I know it's going to go on the agenda either way. What I'm wondering is you talked about making modifications prior to it going on the agenda. And, and much of this just to do that. Correct. And all I was asking was that if we we will do the best we can to get those recommended. But Carolyn, we've we've no, had no, amendments important. given to us on the floor at a county board. No, no, I understand that. I understand that. So but it, so if you okay. But we will make, and that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to get consensus now. So rather than than I think that the resolution, um, as it's presented now, I've heard enough concerns that that I don't think it would go on the consent agenda at the board meeting. Okay, which that's means that we would be working on amendments anyway. I am trying to be very transparent and open and say we recognize that there have been recommendations. Allow Eric and I, along with staff, to work on alternatives, and there may not be one. Maybe there'll be two. No, that's right. I just under, I was just trying to figure out the vote. So that's fine. Got it. And if anyone wants, Got if it. anyone does have recommendations, right. send them to me. Mm -hmm. This obviously the sooner the better, right? But if I mean, if you could send them to me or to anyone, I would ask that you send it to both of us at that yeah, time, and then we'll we'll try and do to, what we, we can. To, if you could send them by sometime I, the earlier, sometime by Sunday, January fifth. We could incorporate, or Feb I apologize, <laughs> February 5th, uh, we, could get, we could get those changes out and about and put on the uh, committee of the, or the, 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 the February 9th meeting. Okay. And, and for the committee at home. Um, Mr. Short. So as, as a matter of process, uh, and this is just for my own edification, um, when we're presented something like this before this committee, is, is our responsibility just a, an up or down vote, or do we have the ability within this committee as we sit here today to make an agree upon amendments before it's sent to the board? You can. Uh, you can, yeah. We can make changes today. Mm -hmm. take a yeah, it'll t yeah, I was going to say, you know, then we have a further conversation. So, so I guess the point being, if you vote no, it's still going to go forward. Right. But it that allows us to, but, it, but allowing it to stay, that's what I was trying to get at, not to argue the point. No, no, but if I vote no, it's largely because we know we're going to make amendments. It's going to go on no and unfinished business. It's not going to go on the consent agenda. In the meantime, uh, uh, adjustments will be made, and then we'll be able to discuss it again at the county board meeting, our committee the whole. So and voting no does not t table or get rid of this issue. It moves right. it forward for discussion. Right. And I'm trying to make that abundantly clear to people right. that are going right. to talk to their friends and neighbors. I was talking about when there's a talk about three people in this committee emailing each other about this. I'd like to ask that's an open meetings act violation. Yeah, that, you've got to be oh, very right. careful with that. The majority of a quorum. So two of you can speak together, but I would not recommend any more than two speak together on this issue. Then what if we send them three to the, the chair? Pam decides. Yeah, I would. I would. Is that all right with you, Eric? Send the suggestions through, through, through the chair. Through the chair through as the chair, and then I will share them with you, and it'll just be you and I that have the conversation as opposed that's to two or three. Thank, thank you. Yeah, that's Be better, that's better format. Thank you. Can right. I make one more point? Yes, please. And that is, I don't think it matters whether it goes on new and unfinished business or no, consent. It's, it's going to get pulled off. It's going to get discussed. And with respect to this resolution, in order to get it on the agenda, you have to do some action here today. I understand, but it, but again, it's that's the way our process has been for all committees. I, I don't I don't want to make it more com convoluted and complex. We we already have trouble understanding how government works as it is. So, um, Mr. Kaminsky, just a, a question to answer my own mind. 
Are we just talking of a few modifications to this resolution? Are we talking of a rewrite? Or is it just a few words that we need to change? And have we identified, or have you all identified, where your changes are? I'm going to look at you and say yes to all of the above. Okay. <laughs> I, I have been taking copious notes, and I have gotten comments from almost every individual on the committee, as well as those that chose to come about where they felt comfortable and where they didn't. We've gotten recommendation from the state's attorney. We will attempt to take all of those comments and keep the, the basic um, tenets of objecting to the, the public act now and um, addressing its constitutionality as well as other provisions. Is there a, a way maybe don't shoot me, but you could call a special meeting of the law and government to, you know, go over the changes so it's a finished product that goes to uh, the board on Tuesday night. I don't think we're going to get any further uh, resolution. I, I mean, I, I, I would say no. Okay. I don't think we're going to get any further resolution than the conversation we just had today. You know, we've got we've got wonderful comments from those people who chose to come and address us on, on both sides of the issues. I think we've discussed this at enough, and we also have the committee of the whole meeting as well to really kind of set ourselves up for the ultimate formal county board meeting on Tuesday. Trying to learn. So, yeah. Thank you. But I was again just trying to be clear. So, do I need a, a motion to? <coughs> I approve the resolution or can we make a motion that we're going to present a, an amended resolution to the county board for consideration under unfinished and new business I think just consensus that that's the direction yeah. that we're going in is, is, is okay so we don't need a formal motion I would like to I, I think call yeah a I, motion yeah I think Eric like, wants that too wait nerves what do you think I believe the chairman of the board sets the agenda for the county board. That is true. And, and, and the chairman of the board, as I understand it, we've got yeah. 10 board members here. If there's a consensus is that there's going to be some resolution to this effect, he's going to abide by that. So what, so what I'd like to do as chairman, how about this, is I would like to make a motion to recommend to Chairman Bueller that a resolution addressing opposition and the constitutionality of public act whatever it is, because I don't have it in front of me, be placed on the agenda for the next county board committee of the whole and ultimately the county board meeting. You want to? I would, I would just like to make a motion to vote on this yes. as, as yeah. is. And, you know, with an understanding mm -hmm. that, you know, language might be massaged later on. Uh, but, but, I mean, either way, it's going to go on the agenda. And I think that's just a cleaner way of doing it, frankly. I'll second that motion. <coughs> but you're putting this language. If you so, I, I mean, I dra I'm biased. I draft. Well, I understand that, but we're, it's not saying yes. But the understanding it's going to be changed. So you're voting for this resolution with these words. I. If you vote no, it still moves forward. And I've lost the complete. Correct. So, so then go ahead, vote on that. But, but that's if somebody says no, it's because of this. It's not necessarily. It could be just because of the language. Right, and you're fine. At the end of the day, right? I think we all know your final yes or no vote is going to be on whatever amendments are brought forward at that point. But I would just like there to be an up or down vote on this, just to make, just to ensure that it's on the the February seventeenth uh, board. So, well. Mr. Parliamentarian, I made a motion. There was no second. Eric made a motion. Matt um, seconded that motion. Are you following me? I'm doing well, I didn't, we and didn't, so I didn't second because I was still waiting for clarification. Your, was Mr. Uh, yours, right. So if you want to go back to this, I mean, you decide which one you want to do, but if I, if there was no second because we went straight to clarification and I didn't feel like it was still important. I thought that's what we were going to do, was move Well, forward. that's what I've got, uh, so tell me. Well, if you want to accept Ms. Campbell's second, then your motion was first, you can take a vote on that. I, that's, that's the way I want to go. Okay. So my motion stands, Carolyn Campbell seconds that motion. Can we have a roll call? For the record, do you want to repeat? So the, mo yes. so the motion that I made is to make a recommendation to Chairman Bueller to place a resolution 
opposing the public act and addressing its constitutionality on the next regularly scheduled board meeting agenda versus, versus the resolution that is in front of you. But that's not part of the motion. That's just clarification. That was seconded by Ms. Campbell. Claire, Claire, Kath, got that? Do you want to insert uh, HB 5471? Well, it's a public act now, so I'd rather have the public act because that's correct. Um, can you call the roll call, please? <coughs> Wagner. No. Hendricks. To, to clarify, a no vote means I do not agree. Right. Yeah, right, right, right. no. Campbell. Yes. Uncle. No. Shorten. Yes. All talk. Yes. So it's a tie. Does the tie mean it passes or fails? We have to for a tiebreaker. Okay. And I would like to make a motion to just pass this as is. Second. Seconded by Mr. Kunkel. Consent, it goes on the next agenda under yes. new and unfinished business as it is. I still would make a recommendation that anyone who has amendments or suggestions email them to me and I will be reaching out um, to Mr. Hendricks and we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, next item that was pulled off the consent agenda is 6.2, which is our legislative program. Um, again, Ms. Wegner and Alicia, can I have you? I'll take a seat just in case that there are any specific questions. So, okay. So, I guess my question first is, we were presented this, uh, the draft legislation input summary for the, for the 2023 legislative program. This was everybody who had given suggestions uh, last year. So, who... Who was able to pick and choose what was on this list to go into the proposed legislative program that was presented to us in our packet? I, I actually think that that was kind of a culmination of um, the suggestions that we got, who supported those suggestions, and then um, myself and staff. Okay, because one, and I'd like to have, we're not going to get pick up any. Can we, can we, you know what? Why don't we take a three minute break right, and we'll return? Thank you. Thank you. Use the washroom, get some water, or whatever. If you're, if you're not here for the legislative program, I'd like you to step outside so we can hear. Yeah. Okay. So,
I'd like to um, reconvene um, the meeting and um, going back to uh, 6.2 um, with regard to the legislative program, it's been suggested that now that you actually have maybe a document in front of you that we table further discussion and if there's any other kinds of um, recommendations for inclusion that we do that at the March meeting because this is just kind of a formulated um, agenda from the information that, that we took. But now you have something in front of you that's substantive, and we can have a full conversation in, in March. Well, so Kelly, you would like to speak yeah. about it. Go ahead. A couple years ago, at least since I've been on, we have actually decided at the committee what was going to be at the legislative agenda, not just given a document, picking and choosing what's on this list. So that's what I would like to do, is go through the list, and and obviously what's on the proposed agenda too and, and whether we do it in march is fine okay but, but just again to be clear too this is more of our policy this legislative agenda right. that we're putting in front of you so keep that in mind as, as we move forward it was just more of a policy as a board so it's a broad three thousand foot looking down and so one thing that i the reason i'm speaking about this is one thing i would like nancy to talk real quick if that's okay I, instead of her public comment, I, I don't care. You can you can do that. She also agreed to do it in March, so it's up to oh. you. Oh, okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. If you, if you can make it, it was just the coal tar. Um, I don't know how many are how many people are familiar with the coal tar and the effects. So this is something that's in when you get your driveway resurfaced, and all of the um, chemicals and how it leaches down into the water. So I would like our county to. Um, put that on a policy that we would like to uh, you know it, it, uh, and I apologize Kelly for interrupting maybe what we also need to do is go back and look at the legislative because that was a, a legislative agenda several years back it's so been on I, many I, times yes uh, so maybe what we need to years, do yeah sure. so maybe what we need to do is, is consider that too some of the things that fell off but were always on our agenda prior to that time you know I want to research the, the kind of authority we would need to seek from the state to make that effective that was a conversation I had with, with Nancy because um, I, I don't believe that uh, legislation banning coal tar in unincorporated areas is going to do much um, it needs to be countywide and that's I think the, the real is right this, again the hurdle we've had right. in the past right. uh, but let's but let's dig up our old proposed legislation and, and uh, we can have that for you next time well and it it, these legislative priorities too. These are what we're sending messages to the state too, right? They're they're not just countywide, aren't they? What we are believing. It, you know, it, it, that's the conversation we're going to have, okay. and and I I think for ease of this committee, is that we should adopt a broad policy directive like unfunded mandates and um, you know issues ultimately one of the considerations that I wanted to talk about too is the taking away of our authority to zone um, wind turbines Th those are the kinds of things that again to staff I want to give them a direction so that as things happen in between board meetings they know where we stand to drill down and get more specific then I think that, that that can be something that we do at committee meetings or you know on a case by case basis. So there's there's two kind of levels in my head that we're dealing with, and one of them is that is that broader direction to our staff and our administration, and then if we really want to get in the weeds about something else, then there, I see that. Madam Chair, there is one no. item on this legislative program that is rather specific. Well, that, the Randall Road. That's Randall well, Road. That's the, which again, we, I'm very comfortable that not only from this committee but from transportation committee, we've already we already sought in that right. direction and we have it. At least you put together a, a good meeting recently with the DOT staff and Representative Ness, and we are moving ahead. Well, I would just, I would say that the dissolving townships in McHenry County is pretty specific too, because yeah, that's only I would too. county. I would agree. So this is all focused on what we would like the state to focus on. This all states. I'm not saying it correctly, but yes, yeah, you're right. That's that's one thing I would like to. And, and I would imagine that it's a living and breathing document like our budget and as, as the session goes on if there's other things that come up they get added but, but if it's okay with with that then Nancy can I invite you back in March sure. to, to talk about that sure. and oh sorry no it, is it I, March or the I end of February February 28th February 28th mm -hmm. so um, I'll make a motion I'll I, I, I will 
to, to do that? Do I have the second? I'll second. Okay, okay, I'm looking this way, so I'll do that. Um, motion made by uh, Mr. Shorten, seconded by Mr. Hendricks, to table uh, 6.2 to the February 28th committee meeting for further consideration. And then can you call the roll for me, please? Wagner. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Shorten. Yes. Uncle. Yes. Campbell. Yes. Alta. Yes. Thank you. Don't go too far, Kelly, because you've oh, got I'm six point five two. Yeah. What is the the next one I pulled? Uh, yeah, one year contract with Mathers Clinic with an additional so, year psychological assessments. Yes. So my my issue with that one is that it doesn't state in there that um, I, I would like to state in there. Yeah that it will not exceed the budget and what the budget is for that line item. Because it just says do not exceed 30, or will exceed, exceed 30,000. 30, That's very open-ended to me. It is. So um, this is one of the ones that we routinely uh, bring back. Um, Mathers Clinic is the uh, entity that we contract with to do psychological assessments, psych uh, sex offender evaluations. All of the evaluations that are required uh, or, I'm sorry, all of the evaluations are required by state statute. The judges cannot act until they are done. Um, I can tell you that the cost uh, is roughly $60,000 a year, um, but in, and which has been budgeted for as part of the budgeting process. But even if it is $80,000 a year, the judges do not have discretion. It is simply state law that these evaluations have to be done. Historically, we'd allow uh, defendants to go out and get their own assessments. Sometimes they would come back and be in excess of $2,000, which is why we actually went to uh, Mathers Clinic, or to an RFP process, uh, so that we could tighten uh, those costs down as far as we could. Um, we are looking, at, I can tell you right now, we are looking, I've talked with uh, Chief Judge Camille, uh, at uh, alternatives to see what we can do, do to not only in, uh, increase efficiencies and make the evaluations better, uh, but also hopefully reduce cost overall. This is a, you know, this is a subject discussion we had before. This is not a, a complete blank check, although it, it reads that way. There still is a cap on that contractual line. It's a, it's a, it's a I don't know what, it, what kind of a, what the 3,000 series or whatever it is, but it's got, there's a cap on that line. There's just no cap on the Mathers contract within that line. So there, I don't know how much money you've got in, in, in that 4,000 series. So there is, there, is, there is a cap when they would need to come back. Right, we, we would have to come back to expand the budget. At, you just mentioned it. Was it the $60,000? Well, okay. No. No. We're, we're just spending about yeah, that much. We're spending about $60,000 on the Mathers Clinic contract. Right. But what Pete's talking about is the uh, actual 4,000 line items which when you take that total that you can draw from as part of the budget budgeting, um, yes. it's larger than that. But that is finite though. Yeah, if we hit that, then we have to come back to the board uh, for additional funding. Uh, I, I would, I think it's as simple as just adding a whereas is, um, will not exceed the budget. Okay. I for, just for the would be more comfortable. Okay. We can do that. Do you make that correction or do I? Staff, we can make it. Okay. So it will is, not. Yeah. Is, so that's a motion though from Kelly yes. to approve 6.5 um, with the amendment that uh, whereas is included that caps the amount as to whatever the budget is. You can wordsmith that, yep. but yeah. So that's a motion by Ms. Wagner. Is there a second to that, Ms. Campbell? Can we do a roll call, Kat? Kunkel. Yes. Campbell? Yes. Hendricks? Yes. Wagner? Yes. Jordan? Yes. Alta? Yes. I do. Good question. Yeah. Okay. So when you said before you would, um, they would be able to go to the, uh, anyone they wanted to, now that you have Mathers, do they have that option anymore? No. We, and we've been doing this for probably a decade. Okay. Um, so that. But prior to that, yes, they were going wherever they wanted to go. And you had to reimburse them for that? No, we paid for it. There was not a reimbursement. Oh, but you paid. Well, yeah. but we still paid for it. Right. right. Okay. But you would get the, the same evaluation that we're getting for six hundred dollars. You might get a two thousand dollar bill. Okay. That that was what was happening. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Six point six. I believe that was you, Ms. Wagner. It was. So just um, 
this additional position is being created with ARPA funding. That is correct. Usually ARPA funding is only supposed to be used for one-time expenses. So how, after this year, how will this be funded? You're, you're correct. Most of the ARPA funding has been used for one-time expenses, but not entirely. Um, we have a handful of IT positions that are, or at least one IT position that is tied to ARPA funding. We have one position in finance that's tied to ARPA funding. Um, we've been working with, with Dan in, in the 22nd Circuit, uh, former Chief Judge Cowan and now Chief Judge Camille, uh, and on the, the requirements need for virtual courts. Yes. I mean, it's been since yes. going back to COVID, right? And, and, and there was a vision that we might need as much as 300,000, perhaps more, uh, to do some hard wiring of, of courts and, and the, the former finance committee and former county board approved $300,000 for that purpose. Right. Dan, what's changing and, and, and how are we gonna use those dollars in a different way? So one of the benefits of the Safety Act, <laughs> uh, it pushed us with our technology. So working with uh, county IT, with county admin, uh, with court admin, and uh, the resources that we have, also the circuit clerk's office, um, we were gonna retool a courtroom in the jail. Uh, we were able to basically piggyback off of the existing MCJC network that exists in the Judicial Center and, and also in this building. Um, we tested that and were able to support uh, live video streaming directly from that courtroom. Now, there was one caveat to that, that we may need to put a repeater in uh, down in the jail. We'd have to work with uh, corrections uh, employees and uh, supervisors to get that done also with county IT. But therefore, you know, the, uh, typically uh, you know, putting a repeater in is much more cost effective than spending $300,000 on a closed circuit uh, in the point, you know, which would involve literally uh, 18 courtrooms. Uh, it was, we're, we can leverage what we have existing with that additional repeater and be able to do what we need to do. So when I was originally talking again with to Ju Chief Judge uh, Camille about this and then also with uh, Peter in finance, uh, can we shift those resources, that $300,000? Uh, because that was looking at just the Safety Act. Well, then Supreme Court uh, Rule 45 comes along, and now we are doing virtual court in every courtroom for almost every uh, court hearing type. There's a very finite list of uh, uh, hearing types that are exempt from remote proceedings. So hence the increase. I think I, I provided that to you, you know, that just in the first 26 days of January, we've seen a 25% increase in the uh, number of participants uh, remotely, almost 3,800 people. So that is a significant impact when you talk about the, uh, the traffic uh, in the Judicial Center coming through the front door. Um, you know, it, it, it helps us, it helps uh, every office that's impacted there, but most importantly, it affects the people that are using the resources of the court. You know, no longer do you need to come from, you know, Cary or Fox River Grove to deal with a simple traffic ticket. You can now literally do it uh, on your phone, preferably while not driving. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Kelly, you're right. I mean, this is, this funds a position for three plus years. Like, it leaves the question, what about fiscal 27? And it sure does. I, I, I don't have an answer other than that I know that the 22nd Circuit's gonna continue to look for new ways of doing things and new efficiencies, and we're gonna cross that bridge as we you know, are here in 26. Okay. That's my only concern. So then is your motion to approve I the Okay, as, as presented. <laughs> is there a second to that, Mr. Hendricks? And as an expenditure, again, it's got to be a voice, or excuse me, a roll call. Campbell? Yes. Hendricks? Yes. Hunkel? Yes. Wagner? Yes. Shorten? Yes. Alta? Yes. You're excused. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good rest of the meeting. Thank you. We have dispensed with the presentations due to the lateness of the hour so um, officially the next item on the agenda is old business i don't believe that there is any old business am i correct mr oster 
um, reports, legislative update. Alicia, do you want to give us an update on where things are going? Well, I don't really have all that much to refer to the years. Okay, so just so you guys all know, they, the, um, did you get one? I'll pass them around. Oh, okay. Um, just so you know, both the Senate and the House just actually um, selected the chairman of their committees. There have been absolutely no committee meetings in Springfield up to this particular point. Legislation is moving very slowly. We have passed the legislative um, deadline to submit bills to LRB to draft and, and present to either the chambers that they're coming from. Things are moving at a snail's pace. I would imagine that come March, when everybody, when both chambers are in full session, it is going to be rapid fire. So even delaying our individual legislative agenda till the end of February is not going to harm the county board's position or our standing or anything else. It also probably is true of our resolution, except for you know making people in the county think we're doing something. Um, but I, again, would cue all of you that come March, I think things are going to pick up at a, at a rapid pace and move rather rapidly thereafter because they're in session a huge amount of time in March. So I just gave your legislative update. How's that? Does it work? Anybody have any questions? All right. Um, executive session. Do we need? There's no executive session. I will accept a motion to adjourn. Ms. Campbell, seconded by Mr. Shorten. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are they still doing the tour? I don't know. I think. I